Ladies and gentlemen, can I welcome you all to this Area Constituency Committee meeting today? And um, can I in particular welcome the new officers that we have today? Um, because Ruth left us, but we've got a replacement, Mark Codman. Many of you will know Mark from Harrogate Borough Council. And we've got Charles Casey, who is a Democratic Services <coughs> Officer. And Katarina Catrell, <laughs> I'll get this right, I'm so sorry, Katrina, <laughs> who is our Head of Legal and Corporate Services. So we've got those new officers today. Can I welcome the members of public that are attending? Um, and we'll, some will be speaking today. And to those who are watching us online, and uh, you'll be able to watch this, I think, up to another two weeks after we finish. So uh, welcome you all to this very, very important meeting that we've got today. And I've forgotten to introduce, shall we say, the, the people that are coming to um, speak today as well, which is uh, Keen Duncan, who is the executive member um, from North Yorkshire, Richard Banks, who's head of major projects, yes. Pink, sorry, and Tanya Weston, Transforming Cities Fund program manager, and Matt Roberts from Economic and Regeneration Project Manager. At the moment, have we any apologies? Oh, no apologies, that's good. Um, right. Can I ask members if they've got any declarations of interest? Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'd like to declare a personal interest. I think in the interest of transparency, it's worthwhile me saying that I'm a member of the executive up at uh, County Hall, and therefore I sit on the body that is the final decision-making body for this item. Uh, I don't think that precludes me from taking part, fully taking part in the debate and voting today, but I just thought out of interest I should, I should mention that. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. Did I see somebody else making a... Oh, the Councillor Broadbank. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm a member of the Harrogate Civic Society, but that won't... <coughs> it's not going to... Uh, um, any, I'm just a member, <laughs> so I'm just not going to have impact on me, so I'm, uh, I'm going to speak and vote. Thank you for that. And along the same lines, I'm a member of a Harrogate Cycling Forum. Uh, but I don't think it prevents me from speaking. And, oh, Councillor Matt Walker. Thank you, Chair. Um, so I am a volunteer um, member for Open Country, uh, which is declared on my register, and I am the Vice Chair of the local uh, Lib Dem party. Thank you. Councillor Warnock. Thank you, Chair. Um, I didn't, I'm just going to grab the opportunity to ask you where can I say for the members of the public to know that actually I can't propose anything or vote in this meeting. I don't want them to think that I'm quiet and a sh shrinking violet because of that. It's, it's the Constitution that tells me that, not anybody else. And I've got feedback more than Led Zeppelin. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Hornigan, and I think you making that statement makes it quite clear. Thank you. Any more declarations of interest? That's fine, thank you. Um, now, um, let's go on to agenda item three, which is public questions and for members to be able to speak. Uh, members of the public. So I'd like to call forward um, Kevin Douglas, who's going to speak on behalf of the Harrogate District Cycle Action Group. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Thank you for the opportunity to present this statement on behalf of ourselves and Open Country. We're asking councillors to support the Harrogate Station Gateway project uh, for what we feel are six main reasons, which I will very briefly outline. Firstly, we believe it will improve the town centre as a place for people as it will become a more pleasant place for people to use, make them want to stay longer, and to eat, drink, and shop. Secondly, Harrogate should benefit from the opportunity of an investment, not reject it. The town stands to benefit from an investment of 10.9 million, and if the 
Council reject it, the money will, not, will be spent elsewhere, not in the Harrogate or the district as a whole, and will almost certainly put in doubt the opportunity for future funding bids to be successful and impact on the securing of future external funding. Thirdly, we believe Station Gateway will be good for town centre businesses. All the evidence shows that the public realm improvements and active travel infrastructure lead to higher spending in the town centre. Fourthly, this scheme responds to the 2019 congestion survey, when 77% of, which is 15,500 residents, asked for better cycling and walking infrastructure. We believe the Station Gateway project shows a commitment to putting in place a hub on which to build that cycling and walking infrastructure. A further reason is that we believe the Station Gateway will improve active travel facilities. Currently, 66% of people say that it's too dangerous for them to cycle in traffic. To make cycling an option for all, including children, we do need dedicated cycle tracks. There are planned improvements also for pedestrians, and of course this scheme will not prevent people from continuing to drive in the town centre if they prefer. The status quo does not represent a town centre accessible to all. The station gateway will begin the process of changing that. Finally, the climate benefits. Transport represents 28% of North Yorkshire's greenhouse gas emissions. The route map to carbon negative for York and North Yorkshire region recognises the need to reduce vehicle miles and increase active travel. To do that, we need to enable active travel through better infrastructure. The Station Gateway project is a platform to begin to provide that infrastructure. And without positive action, North Yorkshire is unlikely to achieve its climate goals. Chairman, for those six reasons, we ask councillors to support the Harrogate Gage Station Gateway project and show your commitment to improving our active travel facilities and to securing the future prosperity of Harrogate and its town centre. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, next, we have Sue Saville from Party Fever. Thank you. We've been um, situated on Station Parade since 2011. We're a party supply shop and we provide a balloon decorating service. Customers either collect balloon orders or we deliver locally. We also provide large installations for corporate clients. There's a good mix of other businesses on our street too, offering services to clients who may not be particularly mobile, hairdressers, a long established shoe shop whose client base is 50 plus and a phys physiotherapist to name a few. For the businesses situated on the east side of Lower Station Parade who have no access to the rear of their properties, how does the council propose if you take away our vehicular access at the front of our premises by introducing both the bus lane and a cycle lane that we should one, receive our deliveries, which in our case involves heavy industrial-sized gas cylinders and palletized deliveries. Load our own vehicles to do off-site contracts. Allow customers ease of access to our services or carry out maintenance to our properties. The provision of three parking spaces, one disabled on the west side of the street, is not enough for the businesses whose customers require ease of access due to convenience or lack of mobility. And the two loading bays on the opposite side are impractical and unsafe. I think the bus lane is unnecessary for the number of buses that pass along our road, and nothing is to be gained by introducing one. If all these proposed changes are to add nothing but one minute to a typical car journey around town, what difference would a 66 metre stretch of bus lane make to the efficiency of a bus route? If despite new laws in favour of cyclists, the cycle lane has to be introduced, then perhaps reduce the width of the wide pavements on both sides, or situate the cycle lane on the west side where businesses have access to the rear, 
but preferably leave all the parking in place. Rather than restricting vehicular access, I think the aim should be to enc encourage a move to electric vehicles. It has been stated that this is a transport project aimed to rebalance travel and promote other transport options. However, if this goes ahead, it will make shopping in Harrogate more difficult and the cost to local businesses would be devastating. It will result in less of a town centre for anyone to visit and the bus lanes and attractive corridors and welcome would be pointless and redundant. Thank you. Thank you. Um, did we have a response to anything from the officers? Uh, yes, Chair, I can respond to that question. So thank you for the question. It is obviously very, very valid, and I do appreciate your comments there. I do absolutely empathise with them, and we are prepared to look at the project in this particular area to address your concerns. So I'd want to reassure you and work with you on that point. I think in terms of picking up the particular instances you're talking about loading, the existing situation, there's no loading bays, there's no dedicated amenity on the northern section of Station Parade. You do rely on loading off the WL lines, which have a 30-minute loading uh, amenity under the... <laughs> Defeated by the weather, sorry. So, yeah, we, we are looking at doing... Uh, an amendment to the project in terms of the traffic regulation order we do have the ability to uh, reduce the impact as opposed to increase it uh, without the advertising so to that end what we are proposing to do is to truncate the length of the uh, leading taper to the bus lane over the length of Bower House uh, and make that WL lines like it is now that would avail you the opportunity to load as you do now. It would avail customer 30 minute pick up and drop off time. Um, as you noted on the opposite side of the road, there is a dedicated loading bay that is proposed. There are four parking spaces, one of them being disabled. In terms of the bus amenity, we do feel it, it is needed, it's viable. We've done a, a comprehensive study in terms of um, the outcomes of that amenity. And 44 buses an hour use the station parade at that location. The modelling suggests that each bus individually will gain up to 17 to 20 seconds journey time improvement, which an accumulation over the course of the day is significant to that bus networking. So we do feel there's good reason to promote the use of public transport and in this particular location in the close proximity to the bus station itself. So we are keen to retain the bus lane um, I would note that we've actually taken out the bus lane on Cheltenham, Mount, uh, Cheltenham Parade. Uh, that's another, another aside. I can explain that during the presentation. Uh, but this one we do feel needs to stay. So I think in summary, we do feel that you've, you've got a very valid point. We will take that on board and we will adjust the project to suit. So thank you, Chair. Thank you, Sue. Thank you for that. Now can I ask <coughs> Andrew Brown from Harry... Harrogate Civic Society to make his statement, please. Thank you, Chair. The Harrogate Civic Society has over 300 members, and these comments are the result of an open meeting of the members and detailed consideration of the proposal by the planning and development subgroup of the society. Whilst the society recognises that some changes could enhance the town centre, the present proposals focus on a relatively small section and there is no indication of these being part of a longer-term integrated traffic policy. Without long-term planning, these changes may in the future be seen as having been unnecessary and or detrimental. In particular, the Society is concerned that reducing the main southbound route through the town centre to a single lane will result in significant tailbacks, increased pollution and potential gridlock. The proposal appears to... The proposal appears to have been driven by an imperative to introduce cycle lanes wherever possible, even when they will be of little use. 
with limited, if any, consideration being given to the way that pedestrians, the users of mobility scooters and disabled drivers move around the area. The Society considers that the proposed cycle lanes, accelerating traffic after the single carriageway section and the additional street furniture will hamper the movement of these individuals. The proposals relating to the northern section of Station Parade are welcomed, but the suggested cycle lanes along the remainder of Station Parade are fragmented and confusing. As a result, they will not result in safe, attractive routes for cyclists. The Society considers that the previous proposals for extensive cycle lanes along East Parade represent a much better option. The widening of the pavements along James Street and the introduction of trees is welcomed, but the Society would strongly prefer James Street to remain open to vehicular traffic and to provide, <laughs> to provide on-street parking at all times. In relation to the detailed design for James Street, there is concern about the introduction of low-level planting, which will be vulnerable to damage. The Society is concerned that the detailed design of the proposal will result in a clutter of signs, barriers and other street furniture, plus a variety of surface treatments that will be detrimental to the character and appearance of the conservation area. Also, the need for major change to Station Square is questioned. The principal problems with this space relate to inadequate maintenance and poor collection of litter problems that we suspect will remain however much money is spent on redesign. The proposed introduction of water jets suggests that the designers have failed to understand that for much of the day the relevant section of the square is in shadow. As a result of all the above, the Society considers that the proposals will be detrimental for many users of the town centre and will result in serious damage to the character and appearance of the Harrogate Conservation Area. Thank you. Mr Binks, do you have any response? Thank you, Chair. We won't respond uh, uh, at this particular item because we'll cover off a lot of the commentary in the presentation we're going to deliver later. Thank you. Thank you. Now can I call on William Woods um, from Harrog Independent Harrogate, please, to make their statement. Thank you, Chair. I am William Woods, representing 156 businesses called Independent Harrogate. The station gateway scheme is very well intentioned to encourage people out of cars to walk or cycle, thus reducing congestion and pollution. But I strongly believe this is the wrong scheme at the wrong time. Like most town and city centres, Harrogate is struggling to recover from COVID, the impact of Brexit and the challenges of online shopping. The last thing businesses want now is 12 months or more disruption of the town being turned into a building site. This disruption will hugely be damaging and undoubtedly push many businesses over the edge. On, sep <laughs> on September the 13th, 2021, the Chamber of Commerce, the BID, Independent Harrogate, conducted a comprehensive survey of nearly 900 businesses, which showed emphatically they were against the scheme. Those, those against were the Chamber of Commerce, the BID, Independent Harrogate, the Harrogate Residents Association with over a thousand members, the Harrogate Civic Society, the Granville Road Residents Group, over 300 members, and finally the British Independent Retail Association, a national organization representing over 3,000 retailers across the country. You must ask yourselves, can you, all these groups really be wrong? There are two very successful businessmen in Harrogate who have a considerable stake in the town centre. They are prepared to spend over half a million pounds opposing this scheme because they believe it would be hugely damaging to the town in its future. Again, you have to ask, if this scheme is such a great idea, why would they waste their money and not fully support it? I wonder how many of you have read the economic assessment report which I think is cobbled together to try and justify a scheme to say it would boost the economy. The conclusions are dubious at best. Key businesses in the town do not believe for one moment cycling and walking will increase business by 30%. The 
The vast majority of businesses rely on 60 to 70% of customers coming from all over the county by car, country by car. So they need to easy access to the town and easy places to park, including on-street parking. I feel consultation has been very poor. Zoom meetings are limited, especially when you can only ask questions by typing them out. For something that impacts on a town so seriously, why has there not been a public meeting so everyone can air their views? The Chamber of Commerce organized an open meeting <laughs> when the Chamber of Commerce organized an open meeting when Don McKenzie and others spoke. About 100 had attended, and a vote produced only two in favor. <coughs> what upsets us is that all business groups have made alternative suggestions and amendments to improve the scheme, but they have been totally and utterly ignored, apart from one or two minor adjustments. If North Yorkshire Council is serious about reducing congestion, pollution, they need to address the queues of traffic coming into Harrogate daily, especially on Weatherby Road. £11 million spent on a gateway scheme will do absolutely nothing to solve this significant problem. There have been three consultations, and three times people have voted against the scheme. The significant stakeholders in the town have shown that they are against the scheme, but North Yorkshire Council are still trying to force this harmful scheme upon us. How is that democratic? It's not the WSP, county councillors scattered across North Yorkshire, or their officers that live as far away as Rotherham that will have to live with this detrimental scheme. It is the residents of the business communities who live in the district that will have to suffer the consequences. I firmly believe you never have to make a more important decision as councillors. If you really care about Harrogate, really care about Harrogate, its, its future well-being, you must reject the scheme and look at other options. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Now can I call on Mrs. Uh, Judith uh, Darcy-Thompson from the Stray Defence Association, please. Thank you, Chair. What this project will create is a road to nowhere, achieving nothing. Not a gateway, but a portcullis slamming down on the main A road, restricting Harrogate Centre for emergency vehicles, commerce, and those who drive in order to work hindering not only Harrogate folk, but those from outlying villages. The scheme is based on the overriding premise of the May 21 WSP report, Transforming Cities Fund Harrogate Gateway, which starts, need for the proposed scheme, point one. Harrogate has no dedicated cycle route which connects with the front of Harrogate railway station to the bus station, resulting in fewer opportunities for sustainable modal transfer. As the walk between them is merely 20 paces, <laughs> is the cycleway, cycleway really required? 11 million plus seems very costly for such a distance, even with the supposed improvements to the public realm. Surely people arriving by bus or train will, as always, dissipate and depart to where they want to be, not lingering outside, but heading for their Harrogate destinations. Construction itself will create pollution, havoc, and significantly increase congestion, creating a narrow corridor decimating and dividing the town and blighting its center. How are less able people on the Western Arc going to access the other side of Harrogate? Closing roads between West Park and Station Parade means a lengthy, convoluted route will be needed to get from one side of the town to the other. Many people already choose to walk and cycle when it is possible and conducive to do so. However, this is not Holland, but hilly and often chilly Harrogate. <laughs> Realistically, who is going to walk or cycle at night or in bad weather to either shop, visit a professional business, go to the theatre cinema or a restaurant? Gateway will remove freedom and flexibility from residents and others throughout the district while discriminating against the elderly and disabled. It will accelerate use of internet shopping, creating a donut effect with accessible companies only on the outside, while a large hole empty of businesses, shops, recreation is left in the centre. Harrogate and Knaresborough host the secondary schools, and much congestion is created by parents driving children long distances in and out of town and nearby villages. 
Wouldn't better use of government funding be a fleet of electric school minibuses to collect and return children, thereby removing many private cars from rush hour roads? Harrogate does not have a university or factory-based industry, which might warrant extra cycleways. What we do have is a largely intelligent, conscientious population, aware of and very much engaged with the need to protect the planet. The integrity of Harrogate's many excellent green credentials must be safeguarded. Bordered by the Yorkshire Showground and Harlow Cars Gardens, within the town are 18 parks, the largest being the Valley Gardens. Harrogate has several notable woods. The pine woods connect Harlow Car to the Valley Gardens, providing a much used green corridor to the town. Another from the showground to the Stray is Hookstone Wood. At the center of all of this is our wonderful Stray, open grassland with over 2,000 mature trees, free for the use of all. 200 acres of what is arguably Harrogate's greatest environmental resource. A much loved, well walked and run, enormously beneficial green lung, wrapped quite literally around the center of Harrogate. Gateway would isolate the crucial hub of Harrogate from so many. Please do not bring down the portcullis and tear the heart out of Harrogate. Thank you very much. <clears throat> now can I call on Caroline Bayliss, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman. This project was originally designed in 2016, before COVID and before the vast increase in online shopping. The town centre landscape going forwards suggests a totally different future. For the tourism offer in this town, shopping is a vital ingredient and its uniqueness is essential to its success. Visitors come for the specialist independent shops, the wonderful armwork facades, the amazing cafes, all set in a sea of greenery, which is our stray and our wonderful Victorian flower beds. The gateway plan, though seemingly unobjectionable, is bland and could be found in Peterborough, Milton Keynes or Croydon. There is nothing unique about it. A totally new plan of how the town centre is going to be used for the next 20 years needs working on long before 11 million of our money is spent on a scheme that finds little favour with residents, solves so few problems, adds to congestion and does nothing to beautify the town that we love. Rather, it takes away yet more of our distinct character to be replaced by concrete. Please think again. Thank you. Now can I call on Barry Adams, the Harrogate Residents Association member. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Harrogate is not against change, but the meaningless gateway project is one that NYC seem determined to champion at all cost. Is this because they secured the funding before the idea was thoroughly explored in detail? As with the doomed Otley Road cycleway, all for the sake of doing something. The highways executive has a history of ignoring the democratic process, not listening and dismissive of public comment, hiding behind a meaningless excess of words in press releases a publicity exercise massaged to justify the project, but with a hint of desperation as threats emerge of funding being moved elsewhere. Businesses and residents understand what is at the heart of the town far better than those on the executive, representing disparate constituencies across the new county. Public consultation has been poor. Wording of surveys steers you in a particular direction Results can be deceptive, clearly demonstrated in cons consultations even prior to the Gateway project. It has relied on consultants' irrelevant and questionable data relating to much larger towns with a totally different demographic. It will not solve congestion in Harrogate, a problem generated by ever-increasing levels 
of traffic in and out of, as well as through the town. It is not an inclusive village vision, delivering a balanced and green approach to travel for all road users. No inclusion of high quality, sustainable public transport links. What is required is an holistic master plan for Harrogate that looks at all factors and influences to form a solid basis for future coordinated projects. No pocket planning, which the Gateway Project is. We do care what the millions are spent on, so why all this public realm expenditure if it doesn't amount to real improvements? It is a vanity project, blinkered and contrived. Unfortunately, a highway engineers-led solution, not capable of celebrating this as an exemplary and attractive gateway to the town. And I say this as an award-winning architect, albeit now retired. We need clear leadership on the design side, an experienced urban designer capable of bringing together all stakeholders and coordinating professional disciplines to deliver a considered solution through a highly motivated design team, knowledgeable of the town, capable of engaging in original, creative, but structured thinking. After all, would you go to an eye consultant for brain surgery? Then we need ongoing maintenance, something which has been sadly missing over the last decade or more. Consider what has made the town successful in the past. We are getting nothing more than a desktop design because of this lack of awareness from those with limited understanding of Harrogate, its character and the largely cohesive conservation area it sits in. The proposals must clearly say this is Harrogate, not Leeds, not York, or any other place. The DNA of these is so different. The Gateway Project will do far more harm than good. No guarantee of success. Obsessed with changing travel patterns and behaviours to the detriment of much broader concerns. Businesses and residents are vehemently against it. We therefore ask you to make the sensible and important decision not to support the Gateway Project. There. There is an alternative, and Madam Chairman, I have some paper copies of this. Uh, can I pass these to you to help members perhaps understand an alternative approach? I can't read. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm quite happy if you want to pass those around to all members. Okay, well, thank you for that, Mr. Adams. <gasps> now, can I ask Veronica Adams to make her speech, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman. When Malcolm Neeson passed away last year, Harrogate lost a brilliant and highly respected citizen of this town, unfailingly polite and often reserved person, but one who was deeply committed to the idea of civic pride knowledgeable on every aspect of Harrogate's history and heritage, willing to share this through his many books, writings and columns that were published on a regular basis, often using these columns in the local media to express his concerns. It is only within the last week or so that a good friend of Malcolm's came across some of his thoughts expressed in writing not long before he passed away and obviously wished to share. He was clearly not impressed with the direction Harrogate was moving in, and in the light of the Gateway Project, I would like to share his thoughts with you to reflect on. At all the peaks of Harrogate's past successes, the authorities not only had a clear vision for what the town could become, but also managed to fire the community with an understanding of what the vision was and how their enthusiastic support could convert that vision into profitable reality for the benefit of the entire community. Let us, for a moment, discard all the fashionable rubbish about goals, targets, objectives, and policy statements, which can, so much, which can be so much verbal fudge for doing nothing, and ask if today's council really knows what it wants for ha Harrogate to become, and how it intends to invoke the aid of the population. 
And please don't try to tell me that consultation exercises with biased questions that lead to pre-approved answers have anything to do with a genuine council populist spirit of mutual striving for the improvement of Harrogate. The scale and tone of recent correspondence to the Harrogate Advertiser is ample evidence to show the degree of public concern about the future of our community. So it is not only reasonable to ask the Council, in clear and basic English, is its, vis is its vision for Harrogate, but also to demand an answer. If this basic question cannot be answered, then the top leadership and administration should be replaced by one which is in possession of such a vision. I suggest that Har Harrogate's past successes have arisen because the authorities and residents have been united in their efforts to provide the highest standards, the best facilities and the most attractive amenities for whatever special niche market they succeeded in attracting to Harrogate. Today, it is irrelevant whether that market is for the spa, exhibitions and conferences, festivals or tourism. It is here that I find the lack of clear vision for the town's future so alarming. Again, I ask of our council, what is your vision for our community? Malcolm concludes, I have written enough, so will end. On behalf of Malcolm Leeson, I thank you for listening. Thank you. Now can I call on Jemima Parker, um, Chairman of, of Zero Carbon Harrogate. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good morning. I'd like to start with a quiz question for you. Uh, what do Sheffield, Wakefield, Huddersfield, Barnsley, Oxford, Cambridge, Bristol and London King's Cross have in common? The answer, if you haven't already guessed, is that these towns and cities have all invested in multi-million pound projects to improve their gateway for visitors arriving by train, limiting traffic and creating an attractive pedestrian environment. These are in, these are in local authorities like North Yorkshire that have made public climate emergency declarations. Can, can I ask members of the public to just just allow the speaker to, to speak, please? Thank you, Madam Chairman. These are all in local authorities like North Yorkshire that have made public emergency declarations and they are actively striving to shape places that are conducive to low carbon living. The project, project which you are being asked to endorse today seeks to add Harrogate to this list of forward-thinking, climate crisis-responsive places. These are places that have grasped the need to invert the transport pyramid and prioritise infrastructure for pedestrians and public transport users ahead of private car drivers. At 49% of the district's emissions, carbon from transport in Harrogate and across North Yorkshire are higher than the UK average of 36%. And these are probably the hardest area of emissions to tackle. While the scheme is predicted to bring only modest carbon reductions, it sits at the centre of a wider sustainable transport opportunities for the town. A few key pieces in a bigger uh, jigsaw puzzle. Of course, there are transport elements to the climate change strategy that are being developed by North Yorkshire Council, County Council, sorry, Council, North Yorkshire Council at the moment. Uh, but you will be aware that there is at present no budget to support these. The current approach to deliver the Council's net zero ambition is to bid for government pots of money, such as the Transforming Cities Fund. Whatever imperfections we may see in this station gateway scheme, it is a £10 million investment. Decarbonisation funds are not coming from anywhere else in the near future. Throughout the consultation process, local public opinion has been split pretty much 
50-50, for and against the scheme. So you will not, will, so you will not please everyone uh, whichever way you decide. Can I suggest that this leaves you free to take the long view, uh, with the best interests of the town in mind, to grasp a, the vision of a low-carbon future where shared and active travel complement a more attractive and less polluted Harrogate. I urge you to follow the officer's recommendations and endorse the implementation of the scheme and recommend that the executive approves the making of the TROs. Thank you. Thank you for that. Now can I ask Dame Francine Holroyd, JP, please. Good morning, councillors, guests, and members of the public. By way of introduction, my name is Francine Holroyd, and I am a very proud owner of a large number of properties in Princess Square and the Montpellier Quarter in Harrogate. I am also Chair of Governors for Harrogate Ladies College, as well as being both an adult and youth magistrate for over 18 years. The Gateway Project is not the way forward for Harrogate. It does not deliver... It does not deliver what our town needs in any shape, manner or form. For our town to thrive, we need excellent infrastructure. And yes, that means good on street parking, allowing easy access to a good range of independent and chain stores. Walking, cycling, bus and rail services are not able to fully deliver this. The key to Harrogate's success is that it is unique. It is special. And the plans we have seen are generic, soulless, lacking in character and without individuality. In fact, it could be any town anywhere in the UK. Cars and taxis are essential for the elderly and disabled to enable them to have a good quality of life, and I would say this project is actively discriminating against them. Let's be honest. When someone thinks about going for a day out shopping, do they see travelling by bike as the answer? I don't know about you, but getting hot and sticky cycling over Harrogate's hilly topography, which you must have to agree is unsuited to non-leisure cycling, then trying to try on clothes, etc., and subsequently cycling home with a load of parcels just does not work. <laughs> a lunch out with friends? Again, the same problem. Yes, I agree, we need to encourage more walking and cycling, but not at the detriment of making our town centre unusable. Now, let's talk about the areas of Harrogate that are pedestrianised. Cambridge Street, Oxford Street, Beulah Street. Can you honestly say that the pedestrianisation is successful and we can all look at the street scene with pride? You have to agree that the answer is a resounding no. The street scene is dirty. The paving is damaged with pooling water. The materials used are poor quality and really need replacing. The street furniture is tatty, and most of the antisocial behaviour is conducted around these areas. <laughs> if we continue to pedestrianise, Will this encourage the use of electric scooters and increase antisocial behaviour? I see the evidence weekly in Harrogate's magistrates' courts. If station parade was reduced to one lane, the traffic would back up all the way back to Ripley. It already backs up to Ripon Road frequently and there are two lanes. People would really think twice about visiting Harrogate at all. The gateway scheme also shows cycling both ways on station parade. That is just an accident waiting to happen. All of Harrogate's business groups, who, after all, represent businesses, 
have been totally ignored. Is that right? Councillors, please see sense and reject the Gateway project in its entirety. You need to work with local businesses and stakeholders on a scheme to enhance Harrogate for the future. I am sure that many businesses and property owners would be happy to help, and I am one of those. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, can I now ask uh, Rachel Inchboard to come forward to speak? Hello, everyone. I'm um, Rachel Inchboard, and I live in the town centre from the Granville Road residence um, people. And um, uh, many of the residents are quite horrified after three consultation results against this scheme that is still going ahead. Where is democracy? I have lived in the town centre on Granville Road since 2001. Many residents believe this scheme in its whole entirety will have many negative impacts on our daily lives. Many who also run small businesses in and around the town which are just recovering from the lockdowns. The scheme proposes to redirect the town centre traffic from the A61, including large vehicles, to go into the residential areas of Cheltenham Mount and across Mount Parade, which is a very narrow, small road, and around Granville Road, and towards Bower Road, creating dangerous junctions near Commercial Street and Strawberry Dale for both pedestrians and vehicle traffic. Concerns... Concerns include reduced parking, congestion, noise, air pollution, visual intrusion, safety, health and well-being. Construction of the scheme will be over one year taking place during the night. Access to our properties during this construction phase is limited, so we are told. Traffic data modelling and the data and how this was worked out for an increased volume of traffic into the area onto small roads such as Mount Parade. Residents have all raised individual and collective concerns, even requesting for a public meeting which has been refused. I have a background as a landscape architect and I requested to see an environmental impact assessment at the start. I was led to believe there was one. However, we discovered they never undertook this important process. Um, through a freedom of information request, we found that English Heritage had also requested one too, due to the conservation area status of the town and also where we live. An environmental impact assessment would have identified most of the residents' concerns right at the start, which would have held the scheme drivers to have some form of accountability as to what this project really presented. Perhaps this is why it never got done and this was kept quiet. We have requested air quality monitoring to get a baseline reading. This has been ignored and deemed unnecessary. An environmental impact assessment would have given an air quality baseline to work with. We later found out from planners and people at NYCC that the only place they are conducting air quality monitoring is at right at the far end of Station Parade, beyond Waitrose, which is way out of the scheme's parameters of the town centre. The Breach Grove low traffic neighbourhood caused a similar redirection of traffic, causing congestion on Colbath Road area. Western County Primary School managed to install, install an air monitor. The findings were worrying. The levels of air pollution were above the acceptable levels caused directly from this scheme of redirecting large volumes of traffic, which then caused congestion, mirroring the proposed redirection of town traffic onto the residential area where I live and many other residents live. Traffic orders schedule one, column two, for Cheltenham Mount and the low traffic Neighbourhood notes of 120 local transport notes provide guidance of traffic management issues for local authorities when implementing new cycle infrastructure. 
They should meet objectives set out in a statement of re reason of avoiding danger to persons or other traffic using the road of any other road or for preventing the likelihood of any such danger arising or facilitating the passage on the road or any other road of any other class of traffic. Therefore, the traffic orders that have been put up in town would be likely to increase congestion and cause problems for pedestrians both from a safety perspective, air pollution, and from higher volumes of traffic, which were estimated to be six cars, extra cars per minute, equivalent to 360 cars per hour, not to mention weekends, events, holiday periods, and other things happening in Harrogate, which would increase traffic. Pedestrians' ability to cross any of our local roads could be difficult for any type of pedestrian user. The crossing of Cheltenham Parade, our local <coughs> pedestrian route into the town, will also prove very difficult with the layout and configuration of the design. With three different lanes to negotiate when crossing, a cycle lane, a bus lane and a car lane, not only is this daunting, there will also be raised curbs edging, defining each lane. A few issues to consider in this equation of one particular part is the width of this road for three lanes. Is it wide enough? What if a cyclist falls off their bike? Will they fall into the pedestrian lane or will it be the bus lane? So just to recap, some of our main issues are the air quality, congestion, safety, access parking, along with many other issues. And finally, the people who have imposed this scheme on Harrogate don't appear to live here. The executive committee that drove this scheme to go ahead, only one of the people actually lives in Harrogate. So should this scheme really go ahead? Thank you for that. Can now we now move on to Martin Mann from the Chamber of Commerce, please? Good morning, everyone. I uh, want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to discuss the Gateway Project. I'm here as the acting CEO of Harrogate District Chamber of Commerce, and it, which has been representing the business community in the town for over 125 years. Whilst we're fully supportive of active travel initiatives, we cannot support the Harrogate Station Gateway Project. We've received feedback from our members on two separate occasions, both in October 21 and April 23, and the response has been a resounding no to the project despite the recent proposed changes. Our concern is that the project is poorly timed and based on outdated data, which does not reflect the change in retail and the impact of COVID-19 on businesses. We believe that the project should at very least be put on hold until the data is updated and a complete town plan is developed instead of the piecemeal approach currently being considered. Furthermore, the project does not address issues such as congestion on Skipton Road and Weatherby Road, nor does it encourage local visitors from outlying suburbs and the villages to come into the town. Any future project must prioritise accessibility and safety for all, especially those with limited mobility. We're also disappointed with the previous North Yorkshire County Council's failures to build infrastructure for the future, including the northern and western bypasses, which were identified as necessary in the 1980s and Harrogate deserves better. We also want to address the pedestrianisation of Oxford Street and Cambridge Street. Unfortunately, this initiative has not resulted in the increased footfall, fewer shop closures, or a safe environment. And if pedestrianisation is to continue as proposed, the new council must use better quality street furniture and materials and have better governance over utility companies to ensure that the paved services are adequately maintained. There are also concerns about the development of the land next to the station, potentially into a tower block, which will may overshadow Station Parade and this redeveloped into the public realm. Additionally, it's understood there is a major infrastructure project planned by one of the utility companies that will cause further disruption in the area. It's unclear, unclear whether this will be done during or after the Station Gateway project. This is not just a 12-month building project, it could result in two to three years of disruptions before completion and will still only benefit a few whilst harming the future of our town, our residents and our employers. We need to focus on projects that benefit everyone, 
not just a select few. Harrogate needs structured, cohesive and safe cycle routes in and around the town to improve active travel, not just a few hundred yards past the bus and train station. Harrogate District Chamber are not anti-change, but we are pro-business and pro-Harrogate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mann. Now can I come to our final speaker, Austin Lever. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for uh, accepting my question. Uh, so the Gateway Project uh, is just one of several schemes and projects in the area which is promoting the use of st uh, sustainable travel, i.e. walking and cycling, and is attempting to usher us away from private vehicle use in order to achieve the government's net zero targets. One of these targets is to reduce private vehicle usage by 50% by 2030. To achieve these tar uh, targets, local councils have implemented such things as LTNs, low traffic neighbourhoods, air quality management areas, ultra low emission zones or clean air zones, all being similar things, and have used physical barriers or roadblocks and or by implementing financial charges to vehicle users uh, and have used AMPR cameras to do so. As of August last year, Tanya Weston, who is the programs manager for the Transforming Cities Fund, and Matt Roberts, who is the Economic, Economy and Transport Officer for the Council, stated that the use of AMPR cameras for vehicles and the use of AI cameras for pedestrians were going to be used to monitor the area, but as yet hadn't been discussed, uh, the, hadn't discussed the use for enforcement purposes. So my question to the council is, will the North Yorkshire Council, uh, North Yorkshire, North Yorkshire Council please state whether the use of these cameras will or will not be used as a means of financial enforcement to this particular air quality management area? Uh, and also, are the AMPR cameras that have appeared in several different areas in and around Harrogate to also be used as a means of financial enforcement of other planned low traffic neighbourhood um, areas? Thank you. Can I ask, um, Mr Binks, are you wanting to respond to that? Thank you, Chair. Thank you for the question. So low traffic neighbourhoods, air quality management areas and clean air zones are well established tools for managing the impact of motorised traffic on a local environment. And as such, the council may wish to utilise these measures in the future where there is an identified need and any considerations relating to associated matters such as financial charging and camera enforcement will be considered at that time. Okay. Well, can I thank all those people who've come to speak to us today? Um, I don't know whether members would like to have a, a short break and allow those speakers to, if they wish to, leave the room. <coughs> Entirely up to you guys. Yes? Okay. So we'll have a quick break. Uh, yeah, we'll come back in 10 minutes.
Thank you. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to um, continue with the meeting. And we're now on to the traffic regulation orders of the Harrogate Transforming City Funds. Um, and we've got a, a verbal presentation to begin by Richard Binks, Head of Major Projects. Did, did you want to introduce it, Councillor Donald? Yeah, just briefly, okay. thank you, Chairman. Um, today, uh, May the 5th, is exactly one year since we were all elected to represent residents on the new North Yorkshire Council. It is a coincidental anniversary, but a very apt one. Today, the first meeting of North Yorkshire Council's Harrogate and Knaresborough Area Constituency Committee has one item on the agenda, an item that has attracted debate, passionate support, determined opposition. It is of significant importance to Harrogate, and it is right for the executive to seek your views before making a decision. We were elected, all of us, on May the 5th, 2022, to take action to affect change and to address the issues and problems facing our residents. We were not elected to do nothing, to stand still and hope things will improve. We know Harrogate is facing issues with congestion, air quality, road safety. We know the challenges facing town centre retail. We know that we can do much better on public transport and on walking and cycling. We know the status quo is not sustainable. Gateway represents an 11 million pound investment opportunity. It's not a total and perfect solution. However, it is an opportunity to transform the town centre, improve transport access, revitalise Harrogate as a destination. It represents a potential step, and I stress potential step, towards addressing the issues Harrogate is facing right now and will increasingly face in the future. It is right that the new council, with localism at its heart, consults you on this project of major significance, significant both in terms of the quantum of funding and in terms of the project's impact. But I know that you as local councillors are under immense pressure. We have heard strong views for and against already today. We've seen the consultation results showing the public split down the middle. We have also heard <laughs> legitimate concerns that you will rightly wish to see action to address. I'm not here today to push onto you my views or demand any one outcome. The officer team will very soon straightforwardly and factually outline the scheme, the rationale that underpins it, the key details and potential benefits. The traffic regulation orders required to deliver it, and crucially, the public feedback. But as you listen to their presentation and before you embark on your debate, I feel it is important to attempt to identify areas of common purpose and understanding that hopefully unites us all as elected councillors. My hope and understanding is that all councils here today want, if we possibly can, to find a way to capture £11 million of investment into North Yorkshire. We know this is a significant amount of money. We know the implications of returning it to government to spend elsewhere. And we know that no council in this tough financial era should return hard-fought funding from central government unless absolutely necessary. My hope is that this morning's discussion and debate, your discussion and debate, will be built on that basis. An necessity to take action to address the issues Harrogate is facing now and into the future, and a common effort that requires input from us all, an effort across the political divide that seeks a way to secure investment if we can, rather than rejecting it out of hand. This cannot be a one-way expectation, and on behalf of my executive colleagues, it is my responsibility, my duty, to work with you all as elected councillors to find a way forward, albeit in the context of strict funding criteria set by government out of my control and yours, and albeit against a rapidly approaching deadline. There are just 25 days until the executive decision on the 30th of May, but I'm nonetheless very keen to use every one of those days to ensure we have the strongest possible case for the executive to consider, a case that can be made stronger with your input today. I have had a number of areas of concern raised with me directly by elected members of the committee. Um, I want to just briefly raise those now and talk about some of the commitments um, in terms of taking those forward. The first is around the Odin Roundabout cycling infrastructure. 
Um, I'm very happy to commit that we provide the full details of the options considered and to review the design in advance of the 30th of May so that we can be confident the design is optimal and safe for all. The second issue is the wider sustainable and active travel infrastructure. Gateway includes significant public transport, walking and cycling improvements. But how does Gateway connect with its immediate vicinity? How can we fully and effectively integrate the Gateway walking and cycling infrastructure into the wider town? It is right and fair for you, councillors, to seek assurances about that. And by the 30th of May, we will set out the way forward of how we will use the gateway if it proceeds as a catalyst for further sustainable travel improvements in the wider town. The third issue is congestion. The focus of today's presentation and debate will be on the immediate gateway corridor, the project area. We know that we're proposing improvements to the signals and the Pelican crossings there to ensure better coordination. But what about the impact, impacts on the wider area? While the gateway project is fixed, we cannot look at this corridor in isolation. By the 30th of May, we will outline how we will review the junctions immediately before the gateway area along the A61, Ripon Road and Kings Road. We are prepared to commit funds from our budgets and to look at feasibility works and bring forward a report to the ACC as soon as possible. Your challenge on this issue is a fair one, and we need to demonstrate how we can deliver a coordinated, connected road network and that we have taken all steps to mitigate congestion. These are just three concerns that have been raised with me already, three concerns that rightly deserve attention. There may be other suggestions today. And I'm here at this meeting to listen this morning and to give a cast iron guarantee that any and all comments determined by committee members today will be given the most thorough possible consideration prior to the production of the executive report. So to conclude, I'm not seeking today your unconditional blind support. That wouldn't be fair, nor, nor am I seeking to pass the burden of this, of this decision onto you. The gateway decision will ultimately be a decision by the executive. The executive, the council's administration, not you, will be responsible for the decision to proceed. We will be accountable throughout construction and for the ultimate outcomes. But in order for us to have the option to proceed, we are seeking your endorsement of the gateway as a potential solution. This would allow us to move forward if we so determine and if we can satisfy concerns raised today in order to secure 11 million pounds of investment with potential to address Harrogate's issues. We are seeking your input as local councillors, not just now, but now and onwards I, throughout I, the months ahead. Can I just stop? Can I ask members of the public, please do not shout out. Please let the speaker speak. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. We're seeking for you to make suggestions today to inform the final proposal to the executive, to hold myself and the project team to account, to provide scrutiny and challenge, to act also as a vital liaison forum with the public. We have 25 days before the executive meets to make a final decision on Gateway. I want to work with you through those 25 days to secure, if we can, the investment for Harrogate. Working together, moving forward together, I hope that we can mitigate concerns and unlock the true potential of the Gateway scheme. That's everything from me, Chairman, and I'm now happy to hand over to the officer team who will talk in detail about the Gateway proposal. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know who's up. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Duncan. So just to introduce myself, I'm Richard Binks. I'm the Head of Major Projects and Infrastructure in North Yorkshire Council. Um, by way of giving you confidence in our experience as a delivery team here, I've got over 35 years of delivering new generation projects. I am an award-winning national designer of such projects. I'm a highway designer. I'm a manager. I'm a cyclist. I'm a motorist. Everything is in, is, is in that mix to deliver a successful project. We've got the passion as a team, we've got the technical know-how, and we've got the economic uh, justification for it. And hopefully in the next 20 minutes when we do this PowerPoint present, presentation, we will present the, the, the scheme benefits to you on a factual basis, but also trying to impart that passion that, that I'm feeling from the audience, but we have that as well. 
and you know, we would genuinely want to make the town better. It's a beautiful town, it's the jewel of the crown of North Yorkshire, but it can be better. You know, the, the, the eastern side of the town it is not quite as nice as the Montpellier side. I think it's a bit tired, it needs an uplift, hence the, the reasoning for some of the public railway stations, Square, James Street, the economic opportunity that comes forward with that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to talk about the scheme, the economic drivers for the, the, the strategic drivers, the scheme itself, what we're we doing. We'll go into some technical narrative in terms of, for instance, the, uh, the traffic modelling. We will then talk about the traffic regulation order, which is, of course, what we're here to look at, that being an enabler for the wider project. And we will then go to, uh, back to chair for questions and discussion. So it's going to be a team effort. Um, I will now hand over to my uh, colleagues to uh, commence the, the briefing. Good morning, councillors. Um, I'm Matt Roberts, part of the team delivering TCF across North Yorkshire. I'll be talking through uh, the policy and evidence uh, behind the proposals. So uh, just to reiterate, reiterate what Richard said, really, the first real investment in 30 years will seek to address what is currently a hostile reception um, to visitors of Harrogate in terms of railings, dual carriageways, and tired public realm that's not really befitting. Um, it, it's the, the project is supported and enshrined within several local strategies, the local plan, the town centre master plan, the economic growth strategy, local transport plans, including Harrogate Transport Improvement Package and emerging climate change strategies. And I think we all know it's well-established policy amongst central government as well, and through which um, an emerging mm -hmm. policy uh, is local funding is directed and delivered. Um, we are seeking a balanced approach to travel around the town with a genuine choice of options. Um, I think this is demonstrated um, outside the town with uh, recent investment in Kex Gill, Junction 47. And this is not about stopping cars. This is seeking to provide the infrastructure for people who can to switch to alternate modes. In 2019, we, the, we received the biggest response ever to a consultation. 77% of people told us that wharf cycling and walking facilities should be improved. 75% said smarter choices should be encouraged. And that was backed up within local evidence for the local cycling and walking investment plan, where the average journey length in Harrogate Town was 2.6 kilometres, very short and currently 0.5% of people access Harrogate Station by bike, and that's in the context of around 1.5 million entries and exits to the busiest station in North Yorkshire. 79,000 people li live within 20 minutes cycle of the station. Next slide, please. Um, this slide shows that over a five-year period to 2019, CO2 emissions on the district's A roads only reduced by 4%. That was below both sub-regional and regional levels. I think we can do better. Next slide, please. And a lot of people, or more, more people than our neighbours indeed, travel for travel, not leisure, with nearly 2% of res residents cycling at least three times a week in 2020. I think the legacy from major cycling events held here has meant the town is recognised for championing cycling and that's demonstrated by a strong cycling retail sector that is growing and doing very well. Next slide please, Charles. And people wishing to cycle for, or, or indeed cycling for travel is growing in the five years or four years, sorry, preceding 2020. And a recent survey suggested that of office work workers who do not cycle in their commute, um, providing safer cycling routes would encourage nearly a third to consider it as an option in the future. Next slide, please, Charles. I'm just going to talk a bit about the overall economy of Harrogate. We are, uh, the district itself is, is worth £4 billion in economic value. We are diverse. We have six, over 6 million leisure visitors that enjoy an array of attractions, events to our in our beautiful town. Um, however, inclusive economic growth, sustainable economic growth is being suppressed by local transport, property and demographic conditions. Um, six of the lower super, out, out, lower super output areas, they are small statistical areas within the project area boundary, rank among the third most deprived areas in the country and they are shown on the graphic in your orange and red. 
Um, we aim to link some of these areas and wards to the town centre and onwards to major employment centres and education centres in a sustainable and affordable way. And if access to the town is not improved for those travelling by modes other than private car, um, the growth, diversity and subsequent resilience of Harrogate's economy will be severely impacted. Next slide, please. Uh, between 2021 and 2031, we're forecast to see a 6% decrease in what would be the traditional working age population. Um, we are experiencing an outward migration of the younger people, perhaps a lack of opportunities. We must create an environment that supports a sustainable workforce from reverse this decline. We must retain and attract our youth. Next slide, please. And on that note, driving licenses amongst uh, younger people peaked in 1994. And there is a changing workforce, and by 2035, 2025, sorry, three and four workers will use the car less. Um, although I will note at this point that many older people also choose to cycle as a mode of travel too. And just to reiterate, uh, almost 80,000 people can reach Harrogate Station within 20 minutes cycle ride. The, there is, we, we saw a 12% decline in the number of re retail units in the town between 2013 and 2021. There's a risk of this increasing with permitted development rights. Town centres are, are changing, behaviours are changing, people want a, a, a more rounded experience in their trips to the town centre and we must adapt and diversify to enhance our offer to support that visitor economy. The status quo, the, t the status quo is not sustainable, as uh, Councillor Duncan said. Indeed, a recent report by KPMG suggests that 16.4% of jobs in Harrogate are, expect are expected to continue being done from home post-COVID, and the same report said that accelerated online retail adoption could result in the lost loss of 28% of total total retail offering. Next slide, please. And there are numerous studies and research that highlights the value of better public realm. I'll let you take some of those stats in, um, but people who walk and cycle to the high street tend to make more visits and spend more. And we have looked at 21 other areas where similar changes have taken place, and these aren't just big cities. They're areas with similar town centre improvements um, and similar town centres, such as Stratford-upon-Avon, Bath, Bury St Edmunds. Um, increasingly, more data is becoming available, um, but in summary, evidence suggests that proposals will su support a sustainable future for the town, environmentally, economically, and indeed socially. And I will end before handing over to my colleague that, um, by saying that change is often daunting, but in Harrogate's case, much needed. Thank you very much. Can, can I ask members of the public please to keep their comments to themselves for the moment, please? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Matt, for that. I'm just going to talk very briefly about the scheme um, as it stands and explain some of the background about what are some of the constraints around funding as well and how it's come through. And then I'm going to hand over to Richard. Um, I think it's worth just pointing out this is a national capital funding program. So this uh, the money has to be spent on physical infrastructure we cannot spend it on things like say improving bus services for example um, it comes ultimately from the department for transport um, and administered by the west yorkshire combined authority and we form part of that um, we've always felt actually that the funding was a really good fit with the aims um, of the former Harrogate Borough Council and the County Council, now North Yorkshire Council, in terms of the, the overarching vision for the town and the towns that are supported through that. Um, ultimately, we're looking at connecting people to economic and education op opportunities through affordable, sustainable transport. Um, and we just wanted to point out that um, the lead city region allocation of D TCF funding that the North Yorkshire schemes fit under actually received, and you can see here on the next slide as well, the largest allocation of funding um, for any area in the country. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, and the next one. Uh, oh, could you go back? Oh, we've lost some of the table. Okay, I'll talk through that table 
um, which have more. And the aims of the Harrogate TCF, and I should say, this is not just a cycling scheme, it's very much about accessibility, um, and it's also not about preventing people from driving, it's giving people wider options. Um, so the aims of the scheme are to reduce some of the dominance of cars in the landscape, to lower traffic speeds and to provide safer spaces for the most vulnerable users. So we're talking about those who are walking or cycling. Particularly looking at improving um, accessibility, particularly those with disabilities. Um, so some of the design um, takes that into account. And about improving public spaces as well and improving sustainability, all things I think people would support. We're looking about creating spaces that promote social interaction and encourage people to linger, um, including providing space for events, and ultimately to create a sense of identity and harnessing that spa identity and the his Harrogate's uniqueness. Next slide, thank you. No, could I have the one before, sorry. Um, just in terms of some of the funding requirements, um, there is a requirement um, our projects fit within our proximity to station hubs. So whilst we acknowledge there are other issues in Harrogate, which I think people have eloquently talked about, um, there is a geographical constraint in terms of what we can and can't use the funding for. Um, accessibility, I've already mentioned, and we also have to design any cycle infrastructure so it meets the current government guidelines. Um, we also, um, less funding requirement, but our design approach, um, in terms of the public realm, um, we do recognise Hackett as a unique place. Um, take the local architecture into, into account. Um, for example, lighting schemes in the public realm um, take inspiration from uh, the spa town and ripples of water. Um, there's a commitment to use high quality materials that are appropriate to the town centre. Equally, in terms of sustainability around tree provision and providing um, that balance between the provision of street furniture, so benches and places for people to rest, etc., and signage, um, mandatory signage for traffic, um, but balancing that against adding to street clutter. I'd also say future maintenance considerations are a significant importance. We recognise council budgets aren't unlimited and actually the success of schemes as I think a few people have mentioned today do hang on being easy to maintain in future. Next slide please. I'm not going to talk in great detail about the specific changes proposed um, as everyone's aware we have consulted on the designs remain um, as set out in the most recent public consultation um, I think I would say, uh, though, that um, in terms of the station parade element, you know, we are talking about reallocating space. We're not talking about stopping the road completely um, in particular. Could I have the next slide, please? And again, images from the scheme um, and just added in a little bit of data about, in terms of the public realm, about making, you know, spaces, say, the one arch, which might be... Um, less attractive at the moment to make it a more attractive space and a safe space. Next slide, please. We're just going to talk briefly about public engagement. Um, we have done three rounds of consultation. Um, could you click the next slide? Oh, no. There's animation on this that I'm afraid hasn't come through on the presentation. Could you go back one slide, please? Um, I think we do recognise, obviously, some of our consultations did take place during COVID, during lockdown conditions. Um, we have had face-to-face -face sessions, we have had drop-in days, we, as well as online, um, to allow people to make their comments known, you know, at all times of the day, day and evening. Um, we do recognise this is a scheme that splits people down the middle, you know, it is quite novel, we fully accept that. Um, over the three rounds of public consultation, we have had increased numbers of responses, and I think, as everyone's probably fairly aware, the most re the final round, the third round of public consultation um, had 45% um, 
of people felt negative about it. Um, but of the positive and neutrals account for 54% of responses. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, could I go? Yeah, thank you. Um, in terms of um, recurrent consultation things, just wanted to put on things that I think you have heard from um, speakers today. We acknowledge that our concerns have been raised around potential business impacts, and we do acknowledge um, construction impact as well, and we're working with, um, if the scheme were to go ahead, the contractors on how to minimise disruption for that and to have a minimised programme as well. And the longer-term business impact, and my colleague Matt, I think, has shown how um, actually the economic impact of schemes such as these do tend to be beneficial. Um, obviously, um, we are aware there are concerns about the impact on the road network. Um, my colleague Richard will talk a bit more about that. Um, again, comments about cycle design. Um, some saying we've gone too far, some people saying we haven't gone anywhere near far, far enough. Um, and public realm, we've had comments around, um, again, are we doing too little versus are we doing too much? So in relation to climate change, ecology, um, street clutter, design. Other areas that people have raised with us and have come through from speaking to people um, relating to why aren't we focusing on other areas? And the answer for that is in relation to this funding we are not allowed to. This is a scheme with a very clear, narrow focus on where it can. Next slide, please. I'm not going to dwell in detail, but um, these are the outcomes from the third public consultation. Um, just highlighted some of them, and I think showing that, again, you know, coming through the public consultation, actually more people, although I, I will freely admit it is quite keenly felt, you know, felt actually it might be beneficial for businesses and residents and visitors. Could I have the next slide, please? And again, um, sorry, this is a bit of a busy slide, um, but again, just teasing out some of the headline comments from the third round of public consultation. And I think I hand over now to Richard. Thank you, Tanya. So, of course, a component of this project is focused upon the allocation of road space on, on Station Parade. Um, from the outside looking in, that potentially looks like possibly not a good decision because, of course, it goes from a dual carriageway to a single carriageway. Now, to justify that position and, and the confidence that we have in that this will actually work, we've actually done, commissioned a, a substantive uh, desktop study in terms of computer modelling. Uh, that is backed up, as can be seen on the slide, by uh, at least 15 live count surveys over uh, an, uh, you know, a, an extended period, over a number of years indeed. So we've got that raw data, you know, to suggest what we're doing here is actually accurate and validated. Um, so it can be relied upon. What we've done here as well, we've chosen the worst case scenario we can model against and that being the 2018 survey results. That was pre-pandemic, that was when vehicle usage was, um, you know, uh, perhaps a peak, I would suggest. Uh, we do know that, uh, that the level of vehicle usage is indeed declining. It, it, it's about 4% less over the last five years. Um, but we've used that worst case scenario to provide further reassurance as well, the model, it does not take into account the successful outcome of this project. Clearly, we're trying to develop modal switch, that choice of vehicle, uh, from the vehicle to, to bus use, public transport, cycling, walking. So it assumes everyone's going to carry on doing what they do now. Um, so again, purely based on the worst case scenario outcome. It does accommodate the, the local plan, future investment opportunities coming forward in terms of that potential uh, growth on the network. So again, we're capturing that that future scenario, so again, it's in there. It does actually achieve the, a very, very high level of validation against National Department for Transport Standards. So I think what we're trying to say really is that the model is accurate. We can rely upon the output that it's, that it's, it's, it's delivering here. 
So next slide, please. So what the model does, it, it, it covers basically the substance of the town centre from uh, Ripon Road all the way through to York Place, which in the car we know is about a 15 minute journey as it stands through the gyratory. What the model is predicting, it is actually showing a slight increase in that journey time as we're all aware. 53 seconds in the PM peak, 40 seconds in the, in the morning peak. Core of the day, not much change at all. I think obviously walking, cycling, marginal gains. The modelling doesn't really uh, you know, predict walking times, it's more vehicular focused um, piece of software. I think taking the, those, those that raw data at face value, yes, I think we're holding our hands up and suggesting that there's a marginal uh, journey time increase, but it's not a great deal according to that statistic. So next, next slide, please. I think when you look at the, the town that we have uh, on that gyre to the route, you know, from uh, Kings Road up Cheltenham, Cheltenham Parade and onto Station Parade, what you actually have, as a motorist, for instance, you have eight sets of signals. Three of those are Pelican crossings. That does create poor coordination in terms of that, that green wave flow. Uh, at the moment, the signals are not coordinated particularly well. It's, it's based upon old tech. Um, you've got a very stop-start journey. You've got a platoon effect. Um, it, in fairness, it's got to be said, if you were starting from a, a, a blank piece of canvas, you would not design it as it is now. You would not put pelican crossings at 50 metres in advance of a signal junction, for instance. But hey-ho, that's where we are. Uh, and there's not a lot we can do about that. We have you know, accessibility premises either side they need to cross over to. We do have junctions, it is a historic town centre. So we have to make the best of what we've got. And that's where we come in really, in terms of um, increasing that signal, that signal um, opportunity, shall I say. Of the eight, eight signals I've mentioned, five of them are captured within the red down boundary of the scheme to coordinate better with new software, with new hardware, um, you know, addressing the, the, the opportunities for green waving. You know, other aspects, you know, the Pelican crossings, if we go from a single carriageway to a dual carriageway, of course, that, that pedestrian green time will be less to the, to the advantage of the motorists. You won't have much uh, red time because that simply uh, you're crossing a single lane instead. So there are various things we can do. We can certainly link everything better. Um, we can coordinate it better. So wearing my highways hat, although the modeling is there in black and white, I would suggest it's gonna be pretty neutral. I think the, the main blocker to free flow is not the two lane, it's the fact that you've got controlling signals. You can have as many lanes as you want going into a junction, but if you've got a red light, you've got a red light. What we're looking at, a single lane flowing smoothly will be equally as effective as two lanes going into an inefficient system. And that's where we're coming from. I could reassure the audience that I don't think that the narrative in terms of losing a single lane is the blocker here. I think it will work just as well. So, in terms of, you know, putting that into context, Station Parade, the single lane is only 300 metres long. It's only 300 metres we're, talk we're talking about here, changing to a single lane. It flares out to a twin lane as we approach the James Street Junction, for instance. Um, you know, Cheltenham Parade is a single lane anyway, flaring out to Jewel as it approaches the bus station junction. The A61 in general is largely single lane. <coughs> As you leave the town centre, it's single lane. I don't, there should not be this focus on this dual motorway in the core of the town. Uh, it's not where town centres should be designed. And as I say, I'm confident that we can overcome that, that, that particular conundrum that we, we have here. So next slide, please. So I think we'll move on now in terms of um, the traffic regulation order. As I say, it's an enabler to the wider design proposal. Um, so there are various orders that we're presenting, uh, one of them being a, a parking and waiting order uh, that effectively controls the curbside space in terms of that, that ability to park your vehicle, where, uh, load, et cetera. We are losing 40 spaces across, across the, um, the red line boundary of the scheme. 
I'll, I'll come on to the reasoning for that uh, later on in terms of the response to individual themes uh, at uh, why we think that's justifiable. Uh, taxes, we are adjusting the, the, the taxi ranks. We are removing taxes uh, space from James Street but reallocating it to the western side of Harrogate where in, indeed there's more tax demand. Um, so it, it's moving the space around really. Disabled parking, there are no, no overall changes in fact. Um, we are removing the current amenity on James Street to station parade. Uh, loading bays, we touched on this earlier in, in the forum in terms of uh, the northern portion of station parade. We are indeed introducing two loading bays on that uh, western side. Um, so that, that, that could be classed as an increased provision. We've already discussed the potential relaxation of the, uh, the waiting and loading restrictions um, around the Bower House, which we're prepared to uh, you know, certainly look at and work, work in tandem with our business partners. Um, James Street is an interesting one. Uh, we, are, we are reducing the, number, the, the, the length, physical length of the loading bay by 14 metres. However, I'll come on to this later, we, we've got good reason for that as well. Loading restrictions come into this. Clearly, we are looking at a high quality pedestrian environment in, in Station Square and James Street, which is the core of the, the quality emphasis of, of the project. Again, an enabler for that business opportunity with a real beautiful frontage to draw in that, that as, a, as, a, as a facade to these high quality businesses along that, that you know, prime shopping street. So, in common with the other pedestrian zones in, in the town centre, it will be uh, a service and opportunity outside of core, footfall hours, so that will be 4 p.m. overnight through to 10.30 in the morning. This is a common restriction across the whole of the UK, not just, um, not just Harrogate itself. There is a one-way system, of course. Um, the northern section of station uh, parade, currently two-way, uh, from the bus station uh, junction down, down to the Bower Street end, we are making that one way in the southbound direction, uh, purely to accommodate the, the new uh, bus lane and the, the new um, you know, LTN 120, which is the current uh, cycle design standard uh, segregated cycleway. So to allow vehicles to um, access that portion of town, we are looking at introducing a one-way system in Cheltenham Mount. I'll, I'll come on to that again uh, later on in the next few slides to uh, for the rationale for some of that and the potential impact of that as well. Uh, so next slide, please. So we've already mentioned that with, we've been on three rounds of public consultation. This is effectively a fourth one, albeit a statutory round in terms of that um, regulatory traffic regulation order. Um, we have consulted uh, with statutory bodies. Uh, there are 35 statutory bodies um, to the fore here, none of which uh, reported negatively against the project. And these statutory bodies range from the emergency services through to you know, police, ambulance, fire, emergency doctor services, the hospital, the AA, uh, the British Driving Society, uh, the Cyclist Touring Club, um, Road Haulage Association, Taxi Association, Freight Transport, Disability Forums, etc. Um, so you can see we, we've, we've, we've consulted far and wide on, on, on the TRO. We had 41 public objections to the, to the order. And we'll go into the... I won't reply to those individually, but there are themes in there. So next, next slide. So the first theme is loading loss. We've addressed that one in terms of, uh, we've mentioned North Parade, sorry, Station Parade. James Street, there are three existing bays, six metres, 15 and 17 metres long. What we're doing is we feel they are not fit for purpose. They're very short, they don't accommodate a larger vehicle. We're going to introduce a new 26 metre long bay which captures that big pantenic and not larger vehicle. Uh, we feel that that's a more usable service bay Next slide, please. Parking loss. So yes, we're transparent. There are 40 bays being lost. 
However, in the context of the parking immunity in, in Harrogate Town Centre, 6,789 spaces of the town has. 7,549 if you count two hours opportunity at Asset and Waitrose. That's a lot of parking opportunity in a relatively small town. The 40 spaces represent 0.6% loss. We've carried out parking studies. Um, we know what the maximum occupancies are. Um, the peak is obviously Saturday, certainly taking the on-street paying display bays is only kind of maxed out at 86%. There's a lot of parking opportunity to the fore. The study suggests that we could lose about 120 space and still be comfortable, still have that availed immunity for the circulating vehicles to find a, a spot. We're nowhere near that, um, so we feel that we're still within the, um, the realm of a very viable vehicle orientated town. So you can read the slide there, I, will, I don't want to dwell on that, so next slide, slide please. We've touched on one-way systems, um, so the impact on Cheltenham Mount, yes, there will be a small increase in the vehicles uh, traversing up there in the one-way direction, heading northbound. It will. It is a quite a narrow street, it will um, de-conflict the two-way opposition that we have now, so it, is, it would de-risk that that potential for um, congestion, but it does add two to three vehicles actually per minute, as noted. Uh, next slide, please. So, uh, the bus lane, we are introducing the bus lane, or proposing to introduce it on Station Parade North, 44 buses an hour, up to 20 seconds journey time saving each. We were working with the Passenger Transport Authority uh, they're very, very keen to see to see this immunity in place. It really does help um, that, that, that appetite to, to go on bus journeys if they become more reliable uh, and quicker and more convenient. We've actually taken the bus lane out of Cheltenham uh, Parade. We don't feel we need that. The modelling suggests there's no actual journey time get, uh, gain from, from bus lanes, so um, that that lane will remain as is. And last slide, please. So now the, the summary, really, I think the scheme, you know, sings to a lot of different themes here. We wouldn't be getting this business case through the respective funding bodies if it didn't have a good, strong business case. And to that end, there's the magic figure called the benefit-cost ratio. That benefit-cost ratio is 1 to 1.7. So for every one pound invested in the capital funding we have to the fore, annually you'll get £1.70 back into the local economy. That in itself justifies the project alone. It's definitely an economic driver. You would not get your scheme passed if it was a negative split, for instance. Anything above one is good, anything above two is excellent. We're not quite there. Um, a lot of the schemes we are doing, for instance, the Selby TCF scheme is, is above two. Um, had to get not quite so much, but still, it washes its own face, absolutely. It's the first investment had to get for over 30 years. We do feel it's become a more vibrant, sustainable economy, healthy residents, that modal switch, that recognition of the climate emergency. We really do need to do our bit. Um, it would be awful if had to get um, less to its rolls and there was no change. I really do think that would be the worst case outcome here. And I think, um, you know, the hub of the wheel bit of a bit of a quote there but it's the first of investments to come you know more spokes will come out of this we will go to that multimodal model you know in the wider district so thank you again for for your for your patience and listening and i will now hand back to chair thank you thank you um have any members got any questions to the officers one second, I've got Councillor Walker first. Thank you, that was really interesting. Um, and thanks for everybody pulling that work together. It's clear um, you've got a commitment and an enthusiasm for the project. Um, just actually on your last point, so you've talked about a cost benefit analysis of 1.7. Can I ask when that was revisited and what work has been done on your financial business case? When I've talked to the finance director um, in previous conversations, he's very concerned about um, any capital projects with obviously the inflation inflating costs 
and I'd want to be reassured that we're not going to be going over budget, and if we are going to go over budget, how are we going to fund that shortfall? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I can answer that. So, yes, we're in a live position now where uh, the outline business case has clearly been uh, developed uh, and, and approved. We're now into the full business case scenario. Um, at the executive uh, meeting on the 30th of May, we will be asking um, support to submit that full business case. We're in a live position having the latest data. In, in respect of the BCR, it's, it's the same in essence. We do have cap capped funding, we don't have the luxury of going over budget. So in that respect, um, the, the BCI is made up of the benefits of the um, present value of costs versus uh, present value of benefits. So that ratio is largely the same, um, purely because we can't go over budget. Um, we would have to go into a value engineering scenario in terms of that inflation aspect. But having said that, uh, there is an inbuilt uh, quantified risk assessment into the uh, you know the financial package so we do have uh, flow within the, the, the budget itself which does capture that future inflation narrative and we're working with uh, an early contractor involvement it's called ECI working with uh, a tier one uh, contractor called Galliford Tri uh, we are getting monthly uh, market valuations on that potential um, construction cost coming forward before the, the final tendered price. So there'll be no surprises. We're working with the industry. We've, we've actually got a partner on board already who is you know, looking at that going forward. So to answer your question, uh, the BCR is the same in essence, and I can give you the confidence that um, it's, it's remaining that way. And we'll as I say, we're, looking, we're working with the contract partners to keep it on budget, but maintain the quality. You know, we want what we want. Uh, we don't, we're not prepared to downgrade that. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mann. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, we heard earlier um, during public questions and statements about uh, a possible deterioration in the air quality in the centre of town due to idling and slower traffic on Station Parade. Uh, could you remind us, please, what the outcome was of the full air quality assessment undertaken by the highways team on this issue was, please? Thank you. Yeah, I'll take this one. Thank you for the question. Um, so uh, the air quality, uh, air quality diffusion tubes uh, actually measure nitrogen dioxide. Um, and currently, uh, the, well, the current prediction or the last prediction was the annual mean um, uh, it, it will decrease by 0.2. Um, and it's a, it's a funny U with a G per, per, per meters um, cubed um, at, the, and at a number of receptors on station parade. Um, and uh, so, yes, as much as idling that can increase CO2 levels, um, the scheme is, is beneficial to air quality along the stretch of the project area. Councillor Harrison. Thank you, Chair. I've got two questions. Um, one is the buses that currently go up Cheltenham Crescent to station parade and then into the bus station. Has the bus company indicated they, that they may reroute up the newly one-way Cheltenham Mount and then use the new bus lane to get into the bus station? Or, or is it envisaged that they'll continue to go up the bank, as it were, up Cheltenham Crescent? That's my first question. So there, there will be two lanes approaching the bus station. Uh, one will be for the bus station and the net network rail. Um, car park essentially that's behind so that's how why we felt the need for a dedicated bus lane wasn't necessarily required so that essentially they will carry on and they will have a lane on the left that will go straight into the bus station okay thank you and and my second question was just to query my understanding of something that councillor duncan said in his introduction the traffic the two sets of traffic lights that are outside of the scope of this scheme um, on the junction of Kings Road and Cheltenham Crescent. So that's kind of outside Christie's Bar. Um, sorry, Cheltenham Parade. Uh, and the Kings Road Parliament Street junction. So this is a mainly for um, through, through traffic north-south. 
I, I recognise those traffic lights are outside the scope of this scheme, but exactly what was the commitment that Councillor Duncan made to revisit those to make sure that they are working effectively when the scheme is delivered? Thank you, uh, Councillor Harrison. I'm going to hand over to um, Barry Mason just to talk in detail about that commitment around um, that area, which is outside the scope of the gateway scheme, but is of obviously of critical importance to the flow of traffic through the town. Barry will um, outline that now. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Duncan. Um, yes, we recognise that the, um, those junctions are outside of the red line boundary, so we can't use the Transforming Cities Fund money to actually look at those schemes. Um, but what we will do is, as part of the report to the Executive, we'll outline a way forward for both of those junctions in terms of potentially using um, the Highways Capital Programme funding money. Council Warnigan. Is this just questions, Chairman? Is it just questions? Right, my question's been asked already. And I can have a new microphone, please. Okay, I said, is it just questions, Chairman? And I think Monica, Councillor Slater said yes. Uh, but I said my question has also already been asked, so I don't need to ask another question. Thank you. Then we have uh, Michael Schofield. Thank you, Chair. Um, just one round of business. Uh, as was obviously reiterated earlier by local businesses, it would seem that um, they feel that consultation on the gateway screen has been very insufficient. Um, it's all well and good having an economic assessment report, but it's not the same as a business impact report or business impact assessment. Why has one not been carried out in consultation with all local businesses within the town centre to get their um, in-depth view and knowledge on the town? And, and I'll, I'll reiterate this because somebody has questioned my understanding of business within Harrogate. Um, there's a local business who has just recently reported on the corner of Commercial Street and Cheltenham Mount stating the cost of living crisis and COVID um, combined have starved the town centre of much of uh, its trade that it used to enjoy. They've not gone bust, but they're concerned about what the year, the next years are going to bring them, like a lot of current businesses within Harrogate. Now, Harrogate has a lot of fantastic independent businesses all offering individual services that you can't find online. These people are really worried about their livelihoods. So my question is, why haven't they been consulted with properly and why hasn't a business impact report been done alongside them, please? Um, a business impact report for the scheme, uh, for a scheme like this, isn't norm, um, normally carried out in any case. The indirect impact on businesses is so difficult to um, uh, monetize with any sort of reliability. Um, we aim for more, more people to enter the town, walking, cycling, and remain in the area to actually put a figure on how many people and, and, how, and how more they would spend would um, I would be sat here right now defending what would be um, largely unreliable numbers. Okay, just to re may I come back on that chair, please? So just with regards to current schemes or schemes that have happened within Harrogate in the past, the reason why these impact reports are really important and you need to get in touch with these local businesses is because of the recent schemes that have been revisited just recently, the Otley Road cycle path, which still needs revisiting again, um, as has been acknowledged by the um, highways, because there's still part of it that still needs rectifying after a week of other rectifications. When you are implementing this, where, why can we believe you that it's only gonna take a certain length of time? I have no faith in the designing or of the implementation, um, having seen previous projects within the Harrogate district.
Chair, if I could answer that. Um, yes, it, in terms of the um, understanding the economic impact, we have carried out a full economic appraisal that's included within the report, looking at the um, impacts on um, of similar types of schemes in other areas. Um, we've also looked at the, um, the, the, the profile of the, the, the local economy in Harrogate and how that could potentially benefit. Um, in terms of making comparisons to other schemes, um, there are various reasons why, say, for instance, with the Otley Road scheme, the Otley Road scheme has not been taken forward in its entirety. However, we've done stage one. We're looking at the potential as to how we would deliver the stage three, and we're looking at the alternatives with regards to stage two um, in terms of looking at um, the alternatives to um, providing infrastructure directly on Otley Road. And that was more to do with design considerations rather than any business impact assessment. Thank you. I've now got Councillor Aldrin. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to ask you some specific questions which came up in uh, the questions from Dame Francine and uh, Rachel, who's still with, with us. Um, I'll, I'll ask them all four and maybe we, we get four answers. Uh, traffic backing up to Ripley as a result of this scheme, is that going to happen? Is traffic going to back up to, to Ripley? Will any of this work be carried out, particularly in Cheltenham Mountain, that area, at night? Has there been an environmental impact assessment? And if so, why not? And what, did we refuse a public meeting with the residents of the, of the Granville area? Four questions. Thank you, Councillor Aldred. So, in terms of the traffic impact, no, it will, will not back up to the Ripley. Um, the, the queuing will be contained within the uh, Station Parade Cheltenham Mount area. Um, you know, it will be, in terms of the, the wider the impact on, on uh, Weatherby Road, for instance, sorry, um, Ripon Road, then um, we will be looking at that on a subsequent project, as noted. So, no, there'll be, there'll be no um, backing up in terms of extending beyond the remit of the project. Um, Cheltenham Mount nighttime working, um, nothing planned in terms of that. Uh, Cheltenham Mount is, is actually... Sorry, you said nothing planned in terms of the nighttime working, no, no plans for nighttime working. Not planning on okay. any nighttime working, Thank no, you. not up Cheltenham Mount, no, no. In environmental impact assessment? One. Um, environmental impact assessments are specific to um, certain planning applications. Um, so a scoping request was submitted to the local planning authority, um, which I think that's where the English Heritage, now Historic England, comment came from in response to the request for a uh, screening and scoping opinion from the local authority. The local planning authority deemed that it wasn't an environmental impact assessment eligible um, planning application. The scheme as a whole does not need a planning application. There have been two um, minor planning applications, and that's the reason why an EIA has not been done, as it's not part of the planning process. Right, so that um, does explain that. There isn't one. And... Uh, more importantly for me, actually, the, the most important question, did, did we actually re refuse to meet with the residents uh, of, of the Granville Street area? Um. Oh, well, uh, Tom McKenzie, I'm being told, so you guys may, may well not know that. So it was Mr McKenzie, was it, who refused? Um, we Andrew Jones and Don McKenzie, that well-known couple. <laughs> All right, then, well, perhaps we can put that to... Perhaps these guys will agree to, to meet with those residents. Keane's nodding his head. So at least we've got a meeting. Thank you very much, Keane. I've got no more indication from any member. I've just got a quick question myself. In the report, it says it's about connecting to educational establishments and to um, uh, in 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 places where people are employed, 
How does this do that? What educational grouping are you connecting to? So the, it's the Leeds City region, really. Opportunities in Leeds, York, um, Hornby Park, um, onwards via cycling routes up to Cardell Park, which is the largest employment centre in Harrogate. Um, it's for people in the town centre to essentially use bus and rail for onward opportunities to education and employment across the sub-region and even region. Thank you. You can afford it. Sorry, Councillor Walker. So let's be clear, this scheme is actually an 11 million pounds vanity project. <laughs> it delivers are we, are we not in debate now, Chair? Are, are we, are we, are we that, in debate now? That's Chair? what we were going to move into. I didn't know whether Councillor Walker had gone. Okay, apologies, Chair. Are you going to go into debate now? Thank you, Chair. It delivers nothing more than an expensive landscaping project with mature trees and paving flags, along with 300 metres of cycling track that connects to nowhere. It does not sit within a wider strategic plan. Nobody is going to visit the Gateway Project People visit for thriving independent shops and restaurants, along with the Stray, Valley Gardens, Turkish Baths, to, but, but to name a few. I welcome any investment for the right project, but it has to support our green and robust economy. One which safeguards our heritage and our environment, and makes sure this town remains a great place to live and work. I'd also welcome funding to tidy up the tired high street and marketplace in Knaresborough for the right project. This station gateway project does nothing to address the real problems of congestion and getting the town moving. It only puts a sticking plaster on the problem with no changes to average walking or cycling times and adds 53 seconds to a car journey. The strategic plan for active travel is flimsy, to say the least. The development of a clear strategic plan for active travel across the constituency and the positioning of the gateway within this strategic plan by the end of the year would be a major step forward. A park and ride scheme would get people out of, the car, out of their cars. It's clear from my recent rejection of a council budget amendment to support park and ride schemes that there is no appetite for this from my conservative colleagues. Buses between Knaresborough and Harrogate are unreliable. And the last time I used them, I had to wait over 40 minutes. I could have walked quicker. I have little confidence that this project would deliver would be delivered on time and within budget. It took over six months of weekly chasing to fix defects and dangerous road markings and signage on the Weatherby Road Junction in Knaresborough. Do I dare mention Beech Grove and Otley Road? We have already seen the cost of building materials go quite literally through the roof. This project will go over budget and it will be picked up by the local pack taxpayer or we will use cheap materials, cutting corners. No doubt it will also over, be over time creating financial challenges and loss of revenue for our shops and businesses. As a cyclist, you'd have th thought I'd have supported this project. I simply cannot. It delivers nothing of benefit. We need to do so much better for walking, cycling, car drivers, residents and businesses. We need to do something much more ambitious and deliver a sustainable change for the better. Thank you. Councillor Mann, did you indicate to speak? I did, Chair. Yes, thank you. Um, 
On balance, I think there are more advantages than disadvantages to this scheme. Uh, one of the biggest benefits, in my view, is that the scheme, once finished, will make the town more welcoming to residents, visitors and new businesses. Secondly, I think the project will rejuvenate the town centre, support trade and encourage people to travel more sustainably. Other benefits that are other benefits are that the public realm will be vastly improved, especially the one arch underpass, the station square and the station parade area, all of which at the moment look rather run down and dated. Also, partial pedestrianisation of, of James Street will create a high quality retail environment. In addition, the project will help to underpin the future of Harrogate Conference Centre by making the town more attractive for conference delegates. And this is vital to the economic future of our town. Put simply, if the conference centre is empty, so are the restaurants, pubs and hotels. Furthermore, if we reject Gateway, we may not just lose the 11 million pounds for the project. We may jeopardise much more in terms of future funding from the government. Not delivering on Gateway may affect the government's view of our ability to deliver any town improvement schemes in the future. So these are the benefits, Madam Chairman, but as we know, concerns have been expressed about the potential for increased traffic congestion resulting from the single lane on Station Parade. In that regard, I very much welcome the comments earlier from the Executive Member for Highways, and I think the approach he outlined will help a lot. In addition, traffic modelling predicts only a marginal increase of about 50 seconds in the worst case rush hour scenario. This is only a small travel time increase and does not take into account the mitigations of improved traffic signal connectivity along Cheltenham Parade and Station Parade that we have just heard about. Therefore, the single lane is not forecast to be significantly detrimental to car use nor to be a catalyst for further rat running through the town. In summary, therefore, there are pros and cons for the scheme, as we've heard. And this is very similar to all infrastructure projects that are brought forward by local authorities. But in my view, the pros do outweigh the cons and will result in the future of our local economy being enhanced and safeguarded with a much improved urban street scene and public realm in the centre of town. I would therefore urge my colleagues on this committee to endorse the implementation of the scheme and to recommend that the executive approves the making of the necessary traffic regulation orders. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Any other member wish to speak? Sorry, Arnold. Then. Sorry, I do do apologise. Can you hear me now with that feedback? You, it might be that you might prefer the other microphone when you're about to hear what I'm going to say. Um, firstly, I find it very difficult to sit here and listen to the, how impolite some of you have been, but I'm not going to do the same to you when you've had your say, okay? So please, you won't even say... You, you've had, I'm not going to get you... I'm not, are you had, Excuse me, Anne. Well, okay, uh, Colonel of what? Can you address the I, committee, I, I'm please? I'm sorry, Will, but I just I, I feel that some members of this committee might have liked to say something, but they feel the hostile environment might prevent them. Okay. Right. Um, I, I'm coming. I'm going to come from a, the, the total angle that you would expect a green to come from, is that if we're not going to do something with this gateway scheme now, when are we going to do something? Because we really don't have an option. We need to do something. Now, I think there's a general feeling that... I can hear a voice in the background. It distracts me, Madam Chairman. Um, I think there's a general feeling that everybody wants to protect the environment. But there's not a general feeling that everybody's got the courage to make a decision that is difficult to do so. Now, my credentials are that I've lived in Harrogate all my life. Okay, I've seen change in Harrogate. I've run four, and still running one, very, very successful business. I've just been awarded the King's Award for Industry for sustainability for an eight-year-old business because I had the courage to approach my business attitude that took account 
of the very future that I want to protect for my family. And I just think that the vision is a bit blurred from this project, but it's all that's on the table at the moment. I, I, I welcome the acceptance from the, the, the executive to look at all the possible adaptations or changes we want to make to this project. But I would also say I find it very frustrating that Councillor Walker is politicising this because we can have this debate without mentioning p political parties. And I find that embarrassing. Uh, but I also wonder why, with the vision he's got, it wasn't tabled 12 months ago, 24 months ago, or whatever. And we all had an opportunity to have our say in a way forward with this. And now, just because we don't like one, one element of it, you know, he, he's a cyclist. I'm not. I'm, you know, I, I ought to be. Because looking at my weight, I ought to be a cyclist. But the reality is, I can see the huge benefits of this for the, the a catalyst for making change. And we, we can't turn our back on it. I'm not talking about the 11 million pounds. We only need 22 investors at half a million who are prepared to fight this. And I, you know, as an investor, I would be prepared to put money in to, to support a scheme that was better than this, but it's not on the table. So what we're saying here is, do we say no and do nothing for the environment and protect our future, or do we support something that is not perfect, but give us a foothold to actually go forward? And uh, doing it perfectly is uh, clearly not an option, because we have to agree on it. Any more? Michael Harrison, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair. Um, I share many of the frustrations um, Councillor Warnikens just expressed, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, I've been a councillor for nearly 20 years, and I know that the easiest thing is to do nothing. Um, making a decision in, to do anything in Harrogate is, is difficult, um, but, but we are charged with, with making decisions. Um, we're sitting in a building that I was repeatedly told was a mistake to even consider building. We introduced Sunday parking charges on James Street against the wishes of the building and the world was going to end. I don't think I've ever made a decision in Harrogate that wasn't against a backdrop of opposition, so whilst I, I welcome contributions to the debate, that, that doesn't stop us having to, to make um, an important decision. There are lots of dissenting voices. There's also lots of misinformation being spread, which undermines arguments. One of the speakers today said that the vast majority of businesses rely on 60 to 70% of customers coming from all over the country by car to shop in the centre of Harrogate. I, I'm sorry, I, I just don't, don't accept that. The Chamber of Commerce said we should be looking at park and ride, and Councillor Walker said he wants park and ride. It's a classic example of playing to the gallery. To make park and ride, and I know you'll agree with me here, Arnold, to make park and ride properly work requires a punitive approach to car drivers and would make the town car unfriendly. There's no point in doing it if you're not going to go there. And it's another example of alternatives being suggested that in the end, either wouldn't stack up or would very much, I doubt, would be supported by residents or businesses. I dislike shopping in James Street at the moment. I think it's awful for pedestrians, and this scheme changes that for the better. I dislike the image that a rail passenger is greeted by in Harrogate, and this is a great opportunity to change that. My biggest concern, and it is a concern, with the overall scheme is the negative impact to north-south journey times for car drivers. It's a through road, whether we like it or not. So it's one thing trying to encourage people not to use the car, but if you are using the car to go north-south from a certain part of Harrogate, you've got no choice. So I do understand that. Now, the Civic Society said this would result in potential gridlock. Others have asked if it would back the traffic up to Ripley. Now, the traffic planners are saying this is a maximum of 53 seconds negative impact at peak time that would be contained within the scheme and that's without factoring in any improvements. Um, now, I'm going to trust the traffic planners on this on the basis of the signals on Kings Road and the bottom of Parliament Street being looked at separately. I recognise they're not part of the scheme, but I think they need to be looked at because they're so close to the scheme. And, and the, the project team reminded us that this element is a single lane for 300 metres on a road that the last time I checked was single lane all the way from the A1 
uh, right through to Leeds. So, you know, it, it is part of a scheme, but it shouldn't be the reason to, to say no. So um, I'm hoping that a proposal will come forward to recommend to the executive to support the scheme, Madam Chair. I've got Councillor Mann. Oh, hang on, that's... Yes, I have them, sorry, I apologise. No worries, uh, Chair. Uh, it looks like I've inherited your mic. Uh, um, all right, okay. Uh, I propose that we, the members of Harrogate and Knaresborough AC, endorse the implement implementation of the scheme and recommend that the executive approves the making of the TROs, which introduces the interventions noted in section three of the report. So, Chair, I ask, uh, do you wish me to speak now or later? I think the way everyone's speaking, you might as well say what you've got to say now. Thank you very much, Chair. I'm passionate about where I live, so much that I became a councillor in 2014. I joined, just like other councillors in the room, to make a difference. But I want to give a little bit of background to Station Parade and this so-called lack of vision. The vision for the town was laid down in the master plan in 2015, and it has been continually reviewed. Um, so these things have been thought out. It's a strategic plan. It's why we hired a top flight director for the conference center, invested in developing a world-class destination management organization, invested in creating remote office space for local businesses, invested in the Christmas market and other events to see what works best for the town and what doesn't. The station gateway is the next investment in that program. So what are we getting for our money? Transport. The station gateway will create a transport hub where people can easily transition from one transport mode to another. Train, bus, taxi, car, bike, and even walk. The services will be inclusive and accessible to all, something that is not the case at the moment. This will provide the opportunity for better public transport and easier, safer, active travel. The prioritization of buses will improve timekeeping, reliability, and frequency. Cars transiting Harrogate at worst will be slowed by just 50 seconds, a small price to pay for the benefits that we are getting, including playing our part in reducing the carbon footprint of transport. Second up, tourism is our second largest sector in the economy at 630 million pounds per year. And the four day week is coming, so many more people are likely to holiday in the UK. The conference centre adds a minimum of 35 million to the local economy every year. Access to these, vital, uh, these two vital sectors to flourish is given by this station gateway. We now have seven trains a day that run from London that local businesses fought for. If there's nothing on at the conference centre, our shops, hotels and restaurants are empty, especially out of season. Employment and in business investment, it will bring jobs in the hospitality sector, but it will also attract other employers to the town because we need a blend of jobs, not just uh, hospitality. We have a burgeoning bioeconomy and dig digital financial services, but unless the town is a welcome place, they won't be able to retain the quality people in order uh, uh, to, skill, uh, to work in these businesses. The town needs to be attractive to retain quality people, and we also know there is a persistent loss of young people to what I'll call more exciting towns. Retail. Many of the retailers are worried about the scheme, and I sympathise with them. They have many things to worry about. The internet, the downturn in the economy. I have worked in retail all my life. It's not an easy profession, and you certainly have to work hard. I was brought up in a corner shop which incidentally was closed by one of the first as the supermarkets as it quashed our local market. I've worked with some of the world's largest retailers, such as Nike, Adidas, Topshop, Morrisons, I could go on. I've taught strategy at business school. The closure of non-food 
stores was forecast in 2012. It was estimated that 50% of non-food stores would be closed by 2020. COVID only served to accelerate and exacerbate this more quickly. So the change being brought around by the internet was known uh, and retailers have to get to grips with this. The other piece of information that I'd like to impart is there's going to be about 120 main shopping centres in the UK where all the big stroke chain retailers will congregate. The rest of the towns, and we are one of the rest of the towns, sadly because John Lewis uh, chose to invest in York instead, we need to create a USP to attract shoppers. I think everybody agrees on that point. And we have to do other things to create new experiences, like the Christmas market, which goes from strength to strength. Pedestrianisation, or more pedestrianisation of the town, will help the footfall in the long term, and that evidence is cited in the report. We will attract visitors here, whether for tourism, the conference centre, or to visit, their shop, or visit the shops. But these visitors will also visit the shops. We need to focus on our retail uh, uniqueness. One thing that uh, perhaps the retailers might consider, uh, and I know somebody mentioned that because they're not online, that's what makes them unique. But imagine I come to Harrogate and I get hooked on fat rascals. Uh, Betty's have made it so that I, when I leave, I can feed my habit by shopping online. And maybe we need to invest in some, uh, you know, the retailers need to invest in that. Finally, the public realm. It's going to look fantastic. It will welcome people to the town in a new, attractive way with improved air quality. Of course, uh, no, uh, uh, no project is perfect, and the officers here have said that they're prepared to work and be flexible to make sure that this uh, project actually works. We all know that we are expected outcomes, and we must be able to manage them. So uh, it's up to us as, uh, as councillors to inspect this proposal, but I believe it has gone sufficient examination. It's a serious planned investment in our home that will enrich the economy for years to come, massively improve the public realm, build on the reputation and qualities of the town, help people get around more easily, efficiently, and most importantly, sustainability. sustainably. Sorry. The transition uh, or the Transforming Cities Fund additionally supports some of the projects in Harrogate born out of the congestion study that seek to encourage modal shift to more sustainable uh, transport, more, sorry, more sustainable travel. It should be noted that over 15,000 people got involved and more than 12,000 people expressed a desire for sustainable travel. Now, those numbers dwarf the numbers of people that have. Uh, made comment about this particular scheme. In closing, I'd like to say, if you're not growing, you're dying. We, if we don't take up this offer, I believe we will set Harrogate onto a path of mediocrity, and we may confine ourselves to being a dormitory town to Leeds and York. I therefore urge all my colleagues to get behind and embrace this absolutely fabulous opportunity. Thank you. I, I, I just need a second. Thank you. I've now got Monica who wishes to speak. Um, yeah, I just had a few things that I really wanted to say. Um, I was really delighted to see the response from officers on the specific concerns that Sue at Party Fever had about her business. Um, and it, it really gave me some confidence that actually there is consultation that, you know, good consultation that could happen. And I think it needs to be at that granular level, you know, that we actually need to get into the nitty gritty of understanding the direct pressures that that the scheme could put on businesses and see where we can alleviate that. So that was a really positive step. I'm really pleased about that. And I also really welcome um, some of the things Councillor Duncan said about, you know, looking at other junctions that, that will be impacted or are, are not really performing today anyway, with or without the scheme, to their best. Um, I'm disappointed it's coming so late in the day, um, but I'm, I'm pleased that that that, that is on the table. Um, I really feel that 
the Otley Road Cycle Scheme has caused a big problem for this scheme. I think the, the way it was handled, the, the, the lack of use of it, you know, the problems that it's had has really, really had a negative impact. And I think it's, it's taken away um, the public's confidence in North Yorkshire in delivering schemes. And it really needs, that needs addressing, um, that needs sort of publicly accepting that the, the, the scheme has not been a success and what is going to happen in order to put that right. Um, and also I've got a plea to all those people who are saying they want, you know, they're concerned that decisions are being made and they're not being made of the people of Harrogate. We have a survey that is still open until midnight tonight on our town council. If you want Harrogate people making the decisions for Harrogate, you need to be supporting a town council because that is how you are going to get it. And equally, if you're, con you know, I hear all the concerns about pedestrianised zones looking untidy, litter picking, etc. This is why we need a town council. We need a town council looking after the minutiae of what people in Harrogate actually really want to, to prioritise. Um, so I, I would urge people to take part in that consultation. I personally do think that the pedestrianisation of James Street is a, is a positive. Um, I think the every um, bit of data supports that actually it, it will be good for business. And I know myself as a shopper, I prefer to go to areas where there is increased pedestrianisation. You just, it feels safer, it feels more comfortable and you can go at a leisurely pace. Um, so, so certainly that is something that I support. Hannah Gosler, please. Um, sorry, I have felt conflicted. Um, I welcome and recognise the need for this level of investment in the town. And if a cultural shift towards active travel is to happen, which I am, as you know, wholeheartedly for, the infrastructure needs to be put in place first. However, it cannot be in isolation to everything else. In order for it to be useful, it needs to be connected. In Nesra, we've been asking for a strategic active travel plan for over two years. The journey between Nesra and Harrogate continues to be horrifyingly congested, and because of this, the incentive to travel by bus diminishes and the damage to air quality in the environment continues. It can take me well over 45 minutes to travel three miles from Nesra bus station into Harrogate. So far, we've received two failed active travel funding bids in the constituency, and a scheme, as we've just mentioned, that is viewed by residents as a failure for pedestrians, cyclists, and car drivers. And as I, I echo the comments of my colleague, confidence is really low. In terms of public realm, and as someone who travels, as mentioned, into Harrogate regularly by bus or by train, as a user of what would be this station gateway, I experience the need for investment for this gateway into the town centre. So, personal experience, <clears throat> as you leave the station, the first thing that hits you is the busy and fast-moving station road, an abrupt barrier to your journey, which becomes a more challenging and concerning threat, even, when travelling with young children. Next is the frustrating weave through Station Square, forcing you off the natural desire lines to James Street or Victoria Shopping Centre. This area also has very little cover on hot days and no shelter on wet and windy days. James Street itself and its beautiful buildings are hard to appreciate when, the, when navigating the narrow, busy footpaths caught up in the pace of frustrated shoppers. When you cross over the road, you're again battling with cars and poor visibility around those that line the pavements. Stressful when negotiating with children, but imagine with a buggy sticking precariously out in front of you. Harrogate needs to catch up with and compete with the likes of Leeds in York who are light years ahead of us in our shopping centre improvements. This scheme does provide the starting block to this. It provides the improvements to our public realm to make it more welcoming, safe, pleasant to be in, and hopefully spend more time and money in. However, let's set the challenge to be proactive, to progress the scheme and improve it, and use it, as mentioned, as a starting block. 
We need a holistic approach to active travel in the constituency. We need to learn from our mistakes and allow open and honest scrutiny of past and current schemes. We need inspiring schemes that celebrate our heritage and win the support of our residents and businesses. We need to ensure a cultural shift, shift towards active travel that will improve our health, economy and environment. What I feel is missing in all of this is a decision on who drives the scheme forward, and I believe this should be the area committee who are firmly rooted in their um, community. Councillor Lacey. Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to ask for a point of clarification and, and order. I'd like to introduce uh, a recommended um, motion on which I hope we can uh, have support from the committee. Um, but I want to do it at the right time uh, and in the right way. So happy to do that in a, a later or now, depending on your timing, Chair. Um, can I just, I'd like to make a few comments. And after we've done that, oh, Councillor Schofield? No? Um, what's going to happen is I'd like to say something, then we'll move to the vote on the motions on the table. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm totally against this scheme. It is the wrong scheme. I'm not against cycling. And I actually think, for those of us who receive this, from Mr. Adams, which shows you an alternative solution to cycling, getting cyclists in and out of Harrogate safely, that connects not just, oh, well, we start outside the Royal Hall. It actually connects into my own community and into Nares, um, Bilton, Knaresborough and Starbeck. Why aren't, isn't solutions like that being looked at? instead of one that's sending idling traffic up through our town. And I'm quite surprised that those of you who have the green credentials haven't understood that idling traffic increases the uh, amount of exhaust fumes in our air. And these fumes contain a number of harmful gases. And why we think that that's going to improve if you're a pedestrian or even a cyclist being next to that kind of traffic, I do not know. This is not that I'm anti-cycling. It is not because I don't want to improve our town centre. This is about providing the right thing for both. This doesn't do it. The East Parade option put on the table here today by Mr Adams does exactly that. It also connects the cyclists into the uh, car park where they can park their bikes under, uh, under, under roof, as it were, and go over and straight into the town centre. What we're being asked to do today is a piecemeal thing that doesn't starts nowhere and ends nowhere. And if I had a young child, I wouldn't want them on any of that route at all. It doesn't do anything, either for the cyclists, for the town. It does nothing. And, and actually, when I read the report and it said it makes connectivity to um, our educational, it doesn't do that. The East Parade one connects beautifully into Hornby and all the way around there. So why are we not looking at that? Why can we not look at that and see whether that, in comparison to the Station Parade one, and, and um, this sort of... Um, idea that you come out the railway station, you see that awful thing. Most people come out the railway station, they go out on the side uh, gate door because door, they're going to be going on a taxi or they're being picked up by car or they walk across it to the, the uh, railway sta uh, bus station. It's not often. And, and can I say that also, as one who is a bus user, as you've met all, you all know I don't drive. I am a bus user. I've never known the bus ever having a problem to get out or up station parade, ever. And um, so I, I find that one rather sort of being thrown in as a, this is how we're going to solve that. It's not what happens. Um, and to coordinate all the 
um, pedestrian crossings. I don't know what you mean by that, but if I want to leave the bus station, I want to press that button and be able to get across. And the same as if I leave the train station, I want to do that. Coordinating, it doesn't mean say they all turn red at the same time. It means I'm going to have to wait a long time to get across the road. No, I do think that we need to get to look at the option that Mr Adams has placed before us, which does everything for everybody. It's not piecemeal as this is. And this is about making sure our town centre's um, a very pleasant place to be, a very safe place to be, and that people can get there with different modes of travel. And in fact, if you want to get people there, as you all know that represent the wider areas, you need good bus connectivity. That's what we're really wanting as well, is having better bus connectivity. And, and if we can get that, that would certainly help. But I will not be supporting this. It is the wrong scheme for our town on all levels. And I cannot see what advantages it brings. I don't want poor um, exhaustion fumes to breathe in while I'm trying to get myself to the bus station, etc. And I don't want to find that it starts nowhere and ends nowhere. We need a proper connective cycleway. We need to get round the table and look at a more connected plan rather than this sort of, oh, we'll throw this together. And as for the, uh, uh, the place across the road at Victor, outside the Victoria Shopping Centre, I don't know what all the issues is about that. It does what it says on the tin. If you go and look at it, the people sit inside the, the hedged area and they sit there with their children, knowing the children are safe but close to all the facilities. They sit there to eat, etc. It does do something. It functions. And how many other places have something like that that functions? So I will now shut up and I'll ask you all to uh, go to the vote. If you're supporting the motion... Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd like to understand what Peter Lacey's uh, recommend uh, propo proposal is so that we can perhaps, I don't know, meet? I don't know, because I don't know what his proposal is. Is that okay, Chair? If yeah, we, I can, we can, I yep. think it's, I think we've got a cop. we've got a copy to be circulated. So I, I have a short introduction, if I may, and uh, a motion which is currently being circulated. <clears throat> now, what I hear when I speak to residents, businesses and groups in the town, as well as what I see when shopping or visiting the town centre is, and I think it's been acknowledged this morning, a tired and uninspiring vista with a few gems that people visit despite this grey backdrop. Efforts are made and do make a difference, but there's only so much that our excellent parks and gardens team can do to cover over the cracks or that our businesses can achieve through excellent customer service. It's also clear from the discussions today um, that the town has lacked, despite some comments, uh, a strategic vision over the long term to enhance the unique character of Harrogate as both a visitor attraction and as a great place to live and work. Whether that's down to previous administrations or the disjointed way in which investment now flows to local communities, or both, I'll leave others to judge. But this is no way to build pride in place. It's an approach that has already resulted in a limited patchwork of schemes with variable degrees of success, largely because they're not joined up. However, what I'm perhaps most concerned about is that for whatever reason, we are left with a deeply divided town, and that those on the nay side are justifiably exasperated because they believe that they have not been listened to. Good ideas need thorough testing, as well as a good dose of pragmatism given the resource available, a resource that can never address the accumulated failings and years of neglect, nor restore a sense of pride in our town. The sea, this scheme is therefore caught in a sea of disgruntlement and disappointment that I personally share. That is why the tabled motion, it says that we must and can do better, better and some indications this morning that we are already um, inclined to do so. Better in terms of listening to genuine concerns and alternatives. Better in terms of this committee having a meaningful role, this ACC committee, in representing the residents and holding the North Yorkshire Executive to account. And better in terms of transparency and the gathering of evidence 
when and if the shovels are put in the ground. This is a test of our ability to work together to deliver the best possible scheme given the history, context and resource available. Perhaps we will not achieve that and find ourselves back on the drawing board, but personally, I would be bitterly disappointed if that were the case. I believe that we still have a chance to turn the tide and start heading in the right direction, and that with £11 million in our pockets, surely we can have a crack at that. And I therefore move the motion, which has now been tabled, um, that this committee believes that Harrogate needs a vibrant, prosperous, safe, attractive and accessible town centre and would welcome further investment in it to achieve that goal through a gateway scheme, subject to the following conditions. First, that the genuine concerns of individuals and groups continue to be listened to, debated and responded to where possible with the, within the constraints of the scheme funding. Second, that the ACC has a meaningful role in the implementation of the scheme, including the above mentioned conversations, and that a full report on progress is received at its meeting this autumn. And thirdly, that a rigorous monitoring system for expected and actual impact on traffic flows, the environment, active travel take-up and businesses in the area of the scheme is put in place pre-shovel and made open and transparent from day one. Thank you. I move that motion. Chair, could I, could I we need to first of all that's, uh, that's the point I'm trying deal to with make. the first motion that, and then we can deal with this one. That's exactly the point I was going to make, Councillor Broadbank. <laughs> yes, sorry, I was going to I, I, yeah, yeah. sorry. For, for clarity, we've got a motion on the table which has been proposed in the second is which we've now been debating. Councillor Lacey's motion was put on just so as that we had sight of it prior to that. It hasn't been put forward formally yet or seconded, so we're still in debate of the first motion at the moment. Okay. Councillor Mann? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Councillor Haslam. Uh, uh, Chair, thank you. Uh, I would happily accept this as an amendment to the motion. I, I, I can. I, I am happy to either accept this as an amendment to my motion, or I can withdraw my motion. If, if you want to withdraw, the, the the clearest way forward is to withdraw. And then the motion that's been proposed by Councillor Lacey then could be put on the table for a vote. For a second, yeah. second. Yes. I'd like to withdraw my motion. I'd like to second Councillor Peter Lacey's motion. <laughs> Sorry, guys, do not argue, do not fight. So, Councillor Lacey's motion has now been moved and seconded. Are there any, uh, Councillor Aldrich? I was going to second it, but I'm very happy that Paul is, because I think if we speak in a united voice, the people out there will understand it an awful lot better. So that's great. And I, Paul, I'm, I'm look, looking at the faces of the other guys here on the Conservative side. I'm really happy you've come to that decision. I, there's a lot of things about this scheme, as others have said, that I like, and particularly we need to do something about One Arch. We haven't done anything in 30 years. NYCC, Harrogate Borough Council. The pictures I saw of it were brilliant with the lighting scheme and linking into that safe area, which we absolutely need because it's the number one uh, crime area in, in North Yorkshire. I do like the improved bus lanes. There's a lot of talking going on to my left here, Councillor Walker. Um, I do like the improved bus lines, I like the pedestrianisation. I'd actually like to expand, talk at least about expanding it into Albert Street as well, and I do think this motion gives us that opportunity. And I do like, we do need to connect all the traffic signals, as people have said. There's things I don't like. I, you'd expect me, wouldn't you, to like the cycling? But I don't, actually. It, it is the road from to nowhere. It's, people have said. And although Mr Adams' scheme, I, I think he's not the only one we ought to be considering, that linkage from Oatlands down to the Greenway in, in the Asda car park, does, Dragon Road car park, does make perfect sense. 
And I think we, we really need to revisit that because I think it would cost an awful lot less. And I take Councillor Marsh's point about children on, on a two-way... Uh, what's that meaning? Two-way um, uh, thing on, on Station Parade being uh, a disaster waiting to happen. So, yeah, I do... I do think we should give ourselves more time on this. And I appreciate Keane's offer of talking more in the next 25 days, but it's not long enough. And when you break that down, actually, Keen, it's, it's 25 total days, but actually that includes weekends, bank holidays, so we've actually only got 14 days. And I don't think it's long enough for us to... The one thing that came across very, very strongly for me this morning is we haven't talked to people like the Granville Road Residents Association and indeed Williams, Independent Harrogate and other organisations out there enough. We might have done a cons formal consultation process, but we haven't sat down at a table and gone, and gone round the table and said, you know, we need, will you accept this? Will you not accept this? What would be a good thing? What would be a bad thing? And I think we need to do that. And uh, I think we need to give us that time, the three, three or four months we've said, over the summer period, bring a report back to this committee in uh, the autumn with maybe a revised scheme and then take it to the executive at, at that point. So if I had had the opportunity to second it, I would, but I'm glad that Paul has, and uh, I fully support the the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Harrison. Um, thank you, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm quite happy to support the motion that's been put forward as uh, written prior to the clearly prior to the meeting starting. Um, it's it's recognising the importance of delivering um, a gateway scheme. I'm interpreting the three conditions slightly differently than, than what you've just described there, Councillor Aldred. Um, my interpretation and my support, which I will give, is, you know, there is genuine concerns that we can continue to listen, debate, respond, and make some changes to. But I think we need to be realistic about, you know, if, if one of the changes is, you know, not pedestrianised, part pedestrianised James Street, then that's, that's not, a, that's not a, a change to the scheme that I would interpret within point one that's effectively rejecting the scheme and I, and I think if we if we think differently then then we're kidding ourselves um, but I do think it's right that there are there are things that that can be amended and altered to a certain extent within the scheme that's on the table in front of us and that I'm quite happy that the ACC should have a meaningful role in implementation we're the, the voices closest to to this and particularly on, on point three, um, I, I like nothing better than to, to see the, you know, what's the evidence that we have now and what's the evidence afterwards so that we can really, I suppose, respond to Councillor Slater's points. We, you, you made the point that you felt that, in a sense, the highways team had been undermined by the performance of previous schemes and doing point three would go a long way of restoring confidence um, in that. So I'm, I'm happy to support this, but I, I don't think it takes away um, the, the reality that in, in supporting this, the executives still have to make a decision as to whether to, to in effect, draw down that money and proceed or not. Um, so they can't draw down the money and proceed and then that report back in six months' time be deliver a different scheme. Um, so we've just, we just got to be mindful about expectations there. But within the spirit of how this is written, I'm happy to support. Th thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, uh, at the beginning of this meeting, I stated I didn't have a vote. Um, I also don't have the right to make a proposal. So what I'm hoping is that if I say something, that somebody else might make a proposal, if they agree with it. Um, I, if I did have a vote, I, I could support this with a slight amendment um, because I think within the words put in the opening statement, it doesn't make enough about the benefits of a scheme that protects the environment. Um, you know, it's saying it's attractive, accessible, prosperous, vibrant, safe is great, but it should be sustainable and healthier as well. 
So I would hope that somebody in the room would say, um, I think I agree with Councillor Warnikin and would and I propose you conclude that and then Councillor Lacey accepts it. Um, it's a convoluted way of getting my way, but there you go. Um, the only other thing that I would have concerns about is well, there's two things. Tying this into a document before us that the Chair's made reference to from Mr Adams, um, I, I've looked at Mr Adams' proposals, and unless I'm missing something, it has nothing to do with Albert Street, nothing to do with the actual station and coming into Station Parade and the gateway scheme uh, as it's that's tabled before us. So I'm not sure whether the alternative is just a, an alternative which is a cycle route, or is it an alternative cycle route to go with the other provisions made within the gateway scheme? But, as I said, um, it's a time scale for me as well, because, you know, this climate emergency isn't standing still, and we tend to be seem to be treading water at the moment. So if I could get an indication of what the time scale would be, and not that it's about the money, but £11 million pounds is the gift horse and the mouse we don't want to throw away, are we going to be in a position within the time scale to utilise that money that's available? That's it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I, I don't want to um, comment on and what's just been said. I'll leave that, that to others. I'd just like to agree with uh, what, what the executive member on my left said uh, in his comments and councillors over the floor said about um, this uh, latest motion, which I, I do support. I, was, I just wanted to ask, or ask a question really, about the time scale for this. Obviously, there is a time scale attached to uh, this money from, from the government. So I'd be, uh, as I say, very supportive of this motion, but we just need to be mindful of the time scale which the government is imposing on us. We need to work within that time scale and make sure that we don't miss out on the money. And um, it's entirely up to you, Chair, but we might want to just get the, the comments of either officers or the executive member for highways about the feasibility of the timing and the, the, uh, the time scale for this, which uh, we're talking about in the context of this new motion. Thank you. I've just had an indication, Councillor Duncan, that he would like to comment. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair, for allowing me to speak. And first of all, I just wanted to say thank you very much for um, this proposal. It's um, great to see, actually, um, two representatives of different political parties proposing and seconding this motion. It feels like a very positive um, way forward um, of all relevant parties coming together, um, very positive against the odds and the difficulties which um, this scheme does present. Um, just in terms of the, um, the requests that are made within the proposal, just so we've all got hopefully mutual and shared um, understanding. In terms of any suggestions that have been raised today, I've made notes of all of those. They will be digested and taken on board for the report on the 30th of May. I recognise Councillor Aldra's point that we actually probably have realistically more like two weeks to prepare that um, than 25 full days. But this is hopefully the start of that conversation rather than um, the, the end of it. This has to be an ongoing uh, discussion with the ACC as the key forum for information liaison and scrutiny throughout this process. So I do very much welcome that. We'll do what we can by the 1st of May, but this will be ongoing and continued. In terms of um, any suggestions that come forward and how they might fit with criteria, with budget and with timelines, I think it needs to be very clear that we will have to make a decision as an executive on the 30th of May if we want to ensure that we can deliver this scheme in line with the Department for Transport um, requirements. They are requiring that most of the spend takes place by the end of 23-24. There can be some spend into the subsequent financial year, but the majority has to be 23-24. So we are facing pressure. We are up against it. However, the proposal that's on the table today we can work with. However, I just want to make sure that everyone is on the understanding that there will be an executive decision on the 1st of May in principle around the decision, the submission of that business case to the West Yorkshire Combined Authority, and also on the basis that the ACC is happy and content that you have been given a full opportunity to be consulted on the traffic regulation orders that underpin the scheme. That is the formal part of consultation that we have to do with you, and they obviously determine whether the scheme can go forward. So as long as everybody's happy and comfortable, I am very much welcome this. I think it is a great step forward for us, allows the executive to make that decision. Um, there is a TRO element. I just want everyone to be clear and happy and content that they, if there are any particular or specific things, they have been cap encapsulated um, now and will be taken forward to the report on the 30th of May. Um, thank you. 
Councillor Gosler. Um, can I propose the amendment to um, the motion that Councillor Warnikin has suggested with the words um, environment and healthier? Sustainable. Sustainable, sorry. Yeah. Sus Sustainable yeah. and healthier, I think, were the words. Right. Yep, that's been done. Um, I'm going to take the final speaker on this. It's uh, Councillor Schofield. Hey, so, to be fair, it was just really about the time scales because I noticed at times um, it has been put back, hasn't it? The gateway scheme. But again, the finances have been pushed back now to 2025. At some point in 2025, we can spend it. Is that correct? Is, is that the intent that there is clear indication from the Department of Transport that they expect most of the money to be spent in 23, 24? There's the potential for some to go into 24, 25, but that is very that they expect the majority of the spend to be in 23, 24. There's a very tight time scale right. that we're working to to achieve this. And so, just a clarification as well, um, whatever we're voting on here today. Councillor Duncan will be taking back to the executive at the end of May, but it won't be what we vote on today. You'll, because how much time? We don't really get given any time to make any suggestions or amendments, do we? I'm just concerned about that, the time scale on that. Thank you, Chairman. Um, it was just to um, just to clarify. Obviously, in my opening introduction, I did make um, three sort of core areas that uh, members had already raised with me in advance. They will be taken forward and faxed into the report. There are some other subsequent um, issues that have been raised in the course of the discussion today. They will also be taken into account in the preparation of the report. Obviously, the project team that are here with me right now are up against it in terms of the production of that report for the timelines laid out by the Town for Transport. There may well be, though, further things, subsequent things around the actual um, delivery, the construction, those sorts of issues, which I expect the ACC would want to be actively involved in and give oversight to. So I think there are two things here, the actual scheme that is finally submitted, and there is time to really address some of the issues that you've raised. I think also then there is, after that point, when we move forward, if we move forward to construction, and there's a role then for you as the ACC, and also, once the scheme, if it does proceed, is delivered, how do we then use this scheme to turbocharge the active travel infrastructure to make sure that the congestion flows are working throughout the town? So I think um, that, for me, is how I understand it, and hopefully I'm seeing some nods around the room. That's mutual understanding as well um, from other members of the committee. I've just got Councillor Schofield. Do you want to make any more comments? Sorry. Yeah, Mark? Uh, just for clarification, uh, as part of the proposal, does that include the support for the making of the TROs, which introduces the interventions required? I think uh, Councillor, um, Councillor Duncan has made that clear in the, the, the spirit of the, I mean, that those words aren't in the motion, so uh, technically not, but in the spirit of the motion, I understand that 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 will be a necessary step, a pragmatic step, if you like. But we're not voting. Uh, the motion does not include approval of the TRO. It's just the understanding of, so we know what we're Right. Has everybody had? I presume we're including the two words which Arnold suggested yeah. in the motion. And, okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, if nobody else wants to speak, um, can we now go to the vote on the motion that's on the table now? All those in favour? Do we have to? Against? So that is Can carried. I just have a point of order? Sorry, I, I, Mr. Codman, forgive me. I should have asked for this beforehand. Could we have that minuted in the vote, in the minutes, who's voted in, in favour and who? Have we got to against yet? 
We haven't done we? Yeah. And then we have done the vote, yes. Yeah, and that'll be in the minutes, yeah. Not being asked for a not? name vote, mm. yeah. So I'm too late. <laughs> no, it, it's too late for that now, the vote right. that's Sorry. happened. So um, that motion has now been moved and uh, we'll... Yeah, and it's been, it's been carried. So thank you, everybody, for today. It's been a, a long session, I know, but it's very important to the future of our town. And so thank you very much indeed.